fake. Three, That's two, hard. one, theme song. It's the Paper Blue Podcast. No, we're just PP now. Tony is just PP now. <laughs> Paper Podcast? We're bigger than everything. We're the biggest and the baddest podcast. Yeah. Boom, baby. You are listening to episode 84 of Paper Player. I'm your host, Tony. We're joined with a full cast today of Josh, Jeff, and JB. But before we get into the roundtable of magic, I just want to let you guys know you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, every social media outlet. And if you didn't catch the show live, you can always see it on our Facebook. You can see it uh, via YouTube. And then also, if you just want to get the audio version, there's Spotify and 20 plus other things. But with that, JB, tell me the magic you played. I played EDH. You know what? On Saturday. <laughs> I don't want to hear it anymore. Drunk, drunk EDH. I want to hear JB's EDH story. Come on, this sounds great. Yeah, that's cool. um, this is not something. We I am really so get. glad that you're into EDH now. Uh, no, dude. I wouldn't say I, into. I support your hobby. I wouldn't say into, but uh, I got invited to an EDH group to just drink and play all night, and uh, we did a couple nice. of we did a couple of the Vintage Cube things together like in a big group of four. Oh, you mean playing um, as a collective yeah. oh nice yeah like we drafted together and then played together and got stomped a bunch which was fun and uh and then played uh, a couple couple games of edh that took forever because we were eating and drinking the whole time and just <laughs> yelling at one another um i ended up picking up i was the winner of the first game uh with yeah, that's hard to do with okay, my was... trashy merfolk deck because no one expected Temple Bell combo. So. Oh, that's, the be- that's the best thing. I think, oh I think you have the best strategy of I just love being that like combo for you. It's just it's, it's so good. It's just like oh, I'm a tribal deck. Just kidding. <laughs> Ring a ding ding. Actually, here's my combo. <laughs> you lose. So and I'm still tribal because I don't have any Eldrazi in it. It's purely Library Lang that does it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Uh... But uh, but yeah, and then I um, and then I was like, okay, I'll bring out this other deck, and I brought out that. You'll never deck. get that again, though. Once uh-huh. they know it, once they know it, you'll never I get know. it again in I a know. good pot, at least. Um. Well, I mean, they were playing like goofy decks and stuff. Nothing right. was like super hyper powered or anything. Right. Um. And then we played game two, and I managed to hit a cultivator colossus that played like ten lands, uh, and got ten. Uh, field of the dead triggers and a bunch of other like foul cut triggers and stuff. Yeah. It was it was real dumb. That's a sick one. Uh, still lost that one. It was pretty rough. Uh, they kind of all ganged up on me the second I did that. <laughs> oh, did, and then you I put my... ten lands in play, and everybody's like, "Oh, this is a problem." And I and I like dealt <laughs> a million damage with Obs Nixilis. Obs Ob Nixilis. Are you just a Jun deck? Are you playing solo wind grace? Yeah, solo nice. wind grace. Yeah, yeah, it's goofy. I mean, it's it's good if I can land one of the really good new threats. Otherwise, it's like fine. Yeah. Uh, I don't play a single basic land, so they ghost quartered me and uh, Pat the exiled me, and I'm like, yeah, failed to find. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I have a I have a thing in there that uh, you know I have my own ghost quarter and my own uh, like field of the dead and stuff where it's just like it literally does nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty great. Uh, I also have a a card I didn't get to use that I really want to use that people I think will hate. Mm-hmm. It is um, on your upkeep. You have to sacrifice any or one non-basic land you control. So it's just like terrible for me because I don't. I, it's all non-basics, so I never can dodge it. I just have to keep throwing my own stuff away, which I think will make people hate me less. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. I had fun. It was a good time. Yeah. 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 And then me and Tony played a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh on yeah, Sunday. Sure did. I, I've been playing. I got to play my uh, my nephew again in Pokemon, and his my brother went and bought him a bunch of cards online, and yeah. he tried to mimic my deck. And then I was like, "You don't know how to read," and I smashed him again. So <laughs> <laughs> has he won a prize from you yet? Yeah, he did. I gave uh, he he got a prize from me, so I gave him a pack. That was pretty cool. Nice. He he. There's a a card that um. It basically just snipes something on the bench, and I have small guys on my bench, and he, he was able to go, I'll just do 20, do 20, do 20, and then, like, over the course of the turn, I was like, oh, man, that's really smart, which um, he must be doing that to my brother all the time. And then I told him, you guys should download 
Pokemon Live, which is the new updated version of um, the Pokemon card game. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been out for about a year now. But they still give you a pack with every real pack. Yep, and then you can nice. you can migrate your entire collection. So it's it's a it's it's pretty good. So if you have stuff over there, I, I was like, oh, this is nice. So, um, but yeah, and then I played JB and Yu Gi Oh. Do I get any magic in? Oh yeah, I've been doing those. Uh, I have two of those tokens. Yeah, I got two of them. Two of the decathlon tokens. I don't know what today's is, but basically, if there was it's like one, it was bot drafting. Which yeah, I did that. Easy. I went, I went seven, seven one yesterday. Bot drafting uh, Kamigawa. Yep. Yeah, and then it's because I I took Imperial Oath. Was it the the one that makes three samurais and and scries two or whatever? Scries three. I took that over every rare, every uncommon. I just I took uh, my deck had three of those, and then. Uh, I just took the the turtle. I had no intention of playing the flying portion of it, just so I could pick those back up to play him again. <laughs> <laughs> so you so were I like green white dude once, yeah. and it didn't work out for me. I dude. got blown out by another green white deck. Yeah. So, but I, I was having fun doing that, and then um, traditional draft for Brothers War, which I five won in that one, because I'm telling you right now, the art of the sideboard is gone. People like I may have lost game one, but because I, I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I th- still think I have good sideboard skills and being able to shore up my matchup or at least pick cards thinking about my sideboard instead of just something I won't play um, has been, like, huge. And I think just people fail to sideboard a lot. But, yeah. But That's you, a, hang on. I thought you just said the sideboard art was gone. What I'm saying He's is saying like the, his I, opponents I'm great at sideboarding sideboard. because I'm Tony, the best player in the, the entire, mm-hmm. you know, Wisconsin area by a lot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I think my sideboarding skills are pretty okay. I hope so, because it's it's one of the it's, it's one of the key things that you need to be able to do. And if you don't know how to sideboard in Magic, play a Karn board so you don't have to sideboard. Because <laughs> you play more you play more sideboarded games than you do not main board. Also, I pe- like people struggle. Yeah. Choices. People struggle yeah, to know get... what to take out. They really do. Oh, I do sometimes. Mm-hmm. There's always got to be some cards in your deck that are like instant snaps. For me, it's like almost always Misha's Bobble. Like goodbye. Yeah, of course. And it's just, <laughs> but some people can't do that. They just go They're like, yeah. When you when to take out your Force of Wills? Oh, or your Dazes? Oh, you're like on the draw. Take out your Dazes yep. on the play. Yeah. And keep them in. That's not always true. I like if I'm playing true a lot of the like time. Any kind of combo deck, any deck that's gonna just fuck any if any deck that's just gonna blow out. You know, a combo. I want to leave my days as in. Yeah. So I want to start. I want to start playing. I want to start playing stifles again, or at all. No, it's bad now. Don't because I make everyone mad. I'm coming from the stifle expert. I mean, you you make everyone mad. So mad. JB didn't listen to the last episode. I actually, I actually really should stop playing stifle now because people play against. People play around it now. (laughs) Because they see you. Uh huh. That's pretty nice. All right, man. Um, Josh, did you? Oh yeah, you did get magic in, and then you and yep, Jeff both play the cube. Yeah, I got it, bud. Boom. Yeah, this was the winning cube deck. Uh, we drafted my cube over the on last F and M. What's the theme of your and cube again? It's all uncommons, right? It's the card has to have been printed at uncommon. Mm. Um, and I'm we got the even in the picture the winning deck uh had a the old border foil oops my bad. go back i'm going I'm the old border foil gary, gary mm-hmm. that thing's sick. i just picked up for the cube yeah uh, um it was a blast we had blast a into full, that? full eight people or no we had 10 people we had 10 people in the yep. cube Hell yeah, dude. um somehow or we like angel and uh caesar caesar um caesar they were like of course, they both drafted red blue, and like what? <laughs> I didn't even start in red blue. How did I end up in red blue? You made a mistake. That's I you just, <laughs> I you just like, believe in your red blue powers. No, I started with an on. I started with like what was my first pick? Um, it was some busted artifact. So why this and deck then, feels busted is skull clamp, and I just realized that. Right, as soon like that, that was Skull Clamp's initial debut, and it wins it. And I was like, "Well, that's not a good look for me." <laughs> it's, just, it's one of those cards. And that... you like warned me. Uh, the uh, I think his name was Sherrick, yeah. the winning player. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it right though. He like corrected me a bunch of times. Um, the winning deck. Uh, he 
what was where was I going? Hmm. Uh, you were drafting red blue, and then you got you got uh, cucked essentially. <laughs> no, uh, he played this deck. The player who played this deck was very exper- very experienced. He like he went to KubeCon and all that. He like knew what he was doing, and I'm kind of glad that like he got to come and draft this, and I'm g- glad he won because like he yeah. immediately up on my cube, and he immediately won. Some yeah. of his feedback was that he didn't get <coughs> any targeted removal, and I think that was just, like, a luck of the draw. Because, like, almost every, like, he's like, I didn't ever see a terror, so I just drafted all the um, the bag marauders. I mean, which, it, like, it, got, every single copy yeah. of flesh bag marauders in the cube, and every single un- uncommon, like, two mana kill spell is in the cube. So yeah. he just, like, luck of the draw, never got to see, like, uh, go for the throat or there's that new one that you lose to like I yeah i heard that one or, like was, even just yeah. or something well even um, like he's got bio blight he's got you know cone of cone of flame is like secretly like probably a top 10 in your cube just because if you go against any like mono green or white weenie strategy you play that card it's like an auto win and then if you have like a blue card to pick it back up i don't even know how you, that, that person gets back in the game the other feedback was that i should add a rare lands. I should just do the. So yeah, shop. the guy that won, he yeah. has his own uncommon cube, and he said but what they I'll... did to fix mana was they put in the shock lands and the fetch lands, and that was it. I don't um, think I don't I don't think I want to break that rule. Nah, if you, if you need it's to. very good feedback, and I get why, but I don't think I want to. Nah. Um, and I don't think them fixing is bad in my cube at all. I mean, it looks like he had colors on problems. Just bounce lands. Like, there's not wasteland in the right. cube, is there? There's not a wasteland. Okay, so when it comes, uh, to... there's like a acidic slime. <laughs> sure, but it's it's one of those things. Like these cards are good. Like the downside to putting right. in like the fetch lands, it's gonna. If you were if you had a lot more tricolor cards, which I don't think you have any. If you have a lot more tricolor cards, I, I refuse to put tricolor cards. Yep. In. So if you were gonna do that, then sure, there's an argument to be made there. But I like the idea of taking the cards versus the lands because honest to god, like if there's like a tropical island, it's probably gonna be like the correct pick 99 percent of the time or a fetch land over any of your cards because right. just the power That's level. That's true. Is just to take the fetch right. Yeah. I I don't think or I I don't think I want to break. I've been very hard on the uncommons only. Yeah. Cause like, what, then why can't I just you know put the commons that I want to put in here? Yeah, like, just, or like I'm like I wanted to put opt in here forever, and like I got lucky with Strixhaven. Yeah. But or there's like plenty of uncommon artifacts and stuff that I would like to put it, or common artifacts for sure. And like, why would I? Like, I've been pretty stick on the rule. It's great feedback, and like I get why he does it, and it does probably offer a great drafting experience. But, um. Yeah. I'm glad this guy drafted it. I'm glad he won. Uh, I really like this deck. He blew a, he blew me out. Um, Flashbag Marauder is a real card. Yo, he's got uh, he's got the engine for it. He's got the reassembly skeleton, so he's able to just always yeah. pick that up. And then also he the skull clip and then too. Mm-hmm. I mean, his, this deck um, is sick. Like it's a great Mardu deck. Mm-hmm. It's, it's uh, red black splash one white card. Um, a good white nobody card. opened anything good in any of the packs that we had. There's like uh, we had everyone. So I bought a collector pack for first place. Yeah. And then everyone else bought a pack because they like wanted to do that. Yeah. So like there was like ten packs in the pool, and like there was set boosters fourth, and yeah. all that, and there was absolutely nothing. Nothing of note got opened in any of those packs. Yeah. So welcome Sounds to all right. Together. Um, but it was a great time. Everyone had a blast. Um. And I'm going to do this more often. Hells yes. If uh, anyone finds my cube, or I'll, we'll post the cube list online. Yeah, I'm give me that. For... We'll put it in the we'll put it in the show notes so you guys can copy it and be just like the best podcast of all ma- or, uh, the best magic podcasters on the on the internet to to date. Man, that oh. took a lot to get out there, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right. I'm trying to read and I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I couldn't. I had to come to terms with what I was saying. I couldn't believe that the truth is happening for 2023. Paper Player is the best uh, Magic the Gathering podcast to date. Agreed. We're the real ones. Yeah. At least me. I'm the only one that only plays paper. Yeah. What, well, dude? I played more paper this weekend than you did. We got a. We got a. We got Probably. a RCQ coming up in on the 20th here that I plan 21st. on. Is it 21st? I have so many things on the 20th. I plan on. Uh, I plan on. Pulling out the an, a goodie, but f- something I I, sh- I was gonna go against my better judgment, but I just want to play it. So, I heard it's mm. that stupid teamer deck. I would love I to play that. I, I would love to play that. I just don't think. Nah, 
I, 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 if I run into Living on Deck, I go, oh, okay, that, that that was a fun game. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, I should play that, to be honest. I, it would be a rogue deck that would be fun to play. But, all right. <clears throat> Jeff, did you get any magic in? I did. I played in the cube, as he said. I actually lost to the guy who came in first round one. Mm -hmm. I basically drafted. So he got us both, huh? Um, I basically drafted the deck that you won with that one time you played, Tony. It was mono white. Yeah. Um, I was splashing for two red cards. Oh, um, that was a that mistake. Was it. How did you get the... It, it, I just didn't get the last two white cards I needed. I had to fill out the deck. Um, <laughs> Best podcast of all time. But and I played Ali... <laughs> <laughs> um, I played Ali round two. I got him game three. Like It was just bad beats. He got stuck on, I think, like two lands, and I was just able to flood the board yeah. with... Um, cloud goat ranger and stuff like that for sure did you uh end up getting that that degenerate yep, flanking the guy yep that card is so uh, if people don't play it, against the card they're it, so confusing you know what kind of deck that card's bad against one where they play flash bag marauder effect. yeah yeah um so i did that on friday i went one and two i lost uh round three to angel we went we went to game three and it was like we were both at like i think three and he just happened to be able to pull it off yeah um, Saturday, I went and played a sealed for Dominaria Remastered. Ooh, oh, we wanna, had a WPN store. Let me go grab that picture. No, you know yeah, what? I have it. So, went to go do that. I hadn't heard anything about the accidental rares being in there. Mm -hmm. And I opened my first pack, and lo and behold, um, right there, Federated. Right rot priest was in there and i looked at the symbol and i was like what this isn't from dominaria remastered uh -huh. so i like brought it up and someone was like yeah apparently you're supposed to get them so like people like thought you were supposed to get them yeah yeah because it was like a pretty common thing for people to accidentally get these cards yeah like well, it was happening all over the place yeah, I don't think this only, was but it's only the rares got put in there, not the mythics. And it was only, the I heard it was only in North America too. That could be true because they might print somewhere else, somewhere. Anyways, but yeah. So yeah, I, I opened this. I, I picked it because I was like, I don't know what this card does, like yeah. in this actual format. And then pack two, I saw remedy. I was <laughs> like, oh. And I had to actually ask a judge because I didn't know if it worked. But if I target five of my own creatures with it, it, it puts five poison counters on my opponent. And wow. I got to I got to do that. Well, that felt great. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I went. I did go one and two. Did your opponent um, be mad? I would have been very. Oh, mad I poisoned out people three times. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Because I had that, and then I had the new white enchantment from the new Phyrexia set, where it's a one and a white. Uh, but butter blossom. Upkeep. Yes, Butter Blossom. <laughs> and that, it, them getting lifelink when your opponent has three poison counters is so good. Yeah. That card's sick. Oh. That's wild. But, so, so you opened that. two cards? I I think I went home with like four. I think I opened four. Antonio opened six in his pool, actually. Jeez Louise. That's so bad. Someone opened a Koth, which I got beat by a Koth. <laughs> I mean, a, it's nice get... and bad at the same time. <laughs> Because it's like, I don't know, you wanted a specific draft format. It was like... sealed, so I didn't care. When they drafted on Saturday, that's when it became an issue because it was pulling away from wanting to draft actual cards from Dominaria. Correct. Because I'd opened something that was just good because it was from the standard set and it's like new. Yeah. Um, and a prime it's example of that 2020 was... mechanics. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, on Saturday, the winner of the sealed got uh, full art Omnath. The one that oh, was the Texas on one? RCQ. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, or whatever. Those ones um, are super dope. Did it, it have the store awesome. name on it? Uh, yeah, you couldn't read it because it was almost in a complete circle. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was beyond Pringled. It was terrible. Yeah. That's bad. What are you, you going to do? <laughs> My prize promo pack, I opened Liliana the Veil, so that felt good. 25 bones. Nice. Uh, nice. It, it's stamped, so it's 30. You know, I can't, nice. can't get that stamp. So Sunday, decided to go draft. <laughs> Um, Dominaria Remastered. I, wanted to do this. I ended up opening a new card from Phyrexia, Phyrexia called Urbrass Reforge. Okay. It's written to Artifact at the beginning of your combat, put an oil counter on it, and then make an X1 Elemental with Trample and Haste till end of turn. Yeah. And the card is ridiculous. <laughs> Taking three ones, yep. Yeah. Oh. And like, the bigger it gets, the more your opponent has to worry because even though it has one butt, like, it's got Trample. Mm. So, like, you're just, and it, it's coming every turn. Yeah, yeah. It, it was Pretty really good. good. I ended up going two and one in that, which was really cool. I got um, 
a couple of promos. I missed out. They were giving out the full art Texas Bob for that one, and I really wanted to get that, but I didn't go 3 0. So didn't Man. get it. But 1 2 1, had fun. Farts. I actually did some trading, which was kind of surprising. Papers right, back, boys. Happen. Yeah, I opened up a foil old border Mystic Remora and then a regular one. Yeah. Mm. And I happened to draft them. So this. Someone was there. He wanted it. He was going through my binder. I opened a full art gamble the day before, and he yeah. wanted that. So I ended up picking up a uh, Wandering Emperor from him, and I picked up something else to I, not a Leyline binding. I almost got the Leyline binding, but then I looked it up, and that card's like seventeen dollars or something yeah, stupid it's, like it's, that. It's the only card from Dominaria. Yeah, it's the only card worth. It's the only card you need from Dominaria uh, United. It's not remastered. Oh. United, yeah, whatever. Yeah. There's two Dominaria sets in the last two sets. But yeah, I got Wandering Emperor and like a couple other cards. I did want to mention at the um, the sealed one we did on Saturday, there was a dad with his son there, and his son had just started playing, and his dad hadn't played in twenty years. Ooh! And um, I helped him out like a lot uh, last round. He ended up beating me. His dad did good, um, but he had a good deck. Um, but his son, a lot of us took all of our stuff that we like didn't want to keep like from our draft, and we gave it to him. Yeah. And I, I did my civic duty. I pulled out four lightning bolts. I handed them to him. And I was like, here, <laughs> here's your first play set of like modern and legacy playable cards. I was like, you can't play it in standard, but when you get, you know, a little deeper, make sure to play lightning bolt. Yeah. And Crushing. then on Sunday, I traded a kid who had just started playing EDH a month ago at mm. Armageddon. So I feel real good about this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You ready so, to yeah. make your friend's life hell? Here you go. Yeah, I was like, hey, man, do you like when your friends rage? And he was like, yeah, man, it's funny. And I was like, play this card. Did he and then what you do is after you play it and everyone puts their lands in the graveyard, you concede and you make them play without their lands and you go do something else. Yeah, I'm going to go get lunch. See ya. That's terrible. <laughs> no, that's the. He's I've done it multiple really? times. All right, I've, had, I've had my fun. Because you said that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fine. They can be mad. I don't care. You. You allow Thassa or Thorical and yeah. all that. Like I'm gonna play Armageddon. I don't care. Right. It's that's legal. true. Like uh, it's true. Like a fair argument. Like if you, I rather like... someone play Armageddon and not have a win condition on the board than feel like Thassa's <laughs> no, Oracle you're all terrible. the time. They're the same Dude, thing. You guys, right? you guys didn't remind me that Dark Depths had the old border. My toxic oh, trait oh, is, it is in this like, yeah, no one opened a force for hundred then, and then gotta go get yeah, those. Deal with it. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty penny, especially because they're hard to distinguish. <laughs> like the old border foil Mystic from Mario was like fifty dollars. Yeah, was I can sick. eat Starburst again. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot your tooth got fixed. Good job. Or lip. Both. Yeah, lip. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like That's eleven pretty. bucks, but I'm sure if I want the Japanese version, I'm maybe paying like twenty five per. Yeah, Wait, the card depth is eleven dollars. Yeah. Ooh, I should pick up a playset. I don't have any. For what? Just have them. Just Who cares? Have. Hey, oh, that's the last thing I wanted to mention is I, I'm moving strongly on my New Year's resolution. I went and traded in all of my rare cards for burn and turned them into other cards for other decks. I'm yeah, you're buying a plateau now. from me. Yes, I'm buying a plateau from you, and I just picked up a play set of Bloodstained Mire. When was the last time plateau was playable in Legacy? Right. I only, I, I'm, this is not, dude, I'm trying to like remember the last time <laughs> it was like that registered. initiative deck was red white. Oh, there you go. Yep, smart. Maybe that's what I'm trying to build. We'll see. All right, dudes. Oh, I have to get Sulphur Falls, too. Oh. I have one if you need it. Yeah, I need I Japanese. It this weekend. All oh. right, guys. You know what time you know it is? No, I need Japanese. Oh, this is terrible. The worst bit. The worst bit. The worst bit. Oh, yeah. What was the bad card from last week? Uh, I, I have, wait, it's, it was it's Dark Depths. Oh. Those notes. Tree of Oh, hey. oh my and god! Anime version. Okay, <laughs> it's already way better than everything else. All right, that's a good hit. First hit. Um, this is a good meme. How do we get a meme? This is great. <laughs> this is like okay. So let me say something about this card. So first, uh, we'll just pull it over here. Strength unlimited. It's meme. That's basically it. Um, standard. One of the best like fun like decks to build because it's just like I'm gonna get you and then you do tris tricks of decophobia i think those were in the same set if yep. i'm not mistaken um it was a meme edh it's fun to put this the in meme. your yep if you well it's fun because you can like play a doran deck and be like all right he's got 40 power and i'm gonna one shot somebody you know so that's fun again cdh playable unplayable modern legacy pioneer it's a me unplayable meme i feel like you could play a league and modern with this card and it is in the top 100 meme. memes though it has to be 
it's one of those cards like when you get beat when you get beat by it you're just like upset you're like god damn or forget you're like hmm I'm gonna in, tell nobody top about 100 this. Memes, I'll give it in top 100 memes. It, it gets that award. How also, it, it's got great new art. How Perfect, does it great. work with Vito or like Sanguine Bond? Because it is life gain when you exchange it. Because it is considered life gain, assuming that you're going yeah. up in life. Okay, so you could just dome somebody for 27 too. This, this card's fun. This is like, if I see this on EDH, I go, mm-hmm. nobody kill this. Let's see what this does. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. Nobody what touch happened? it. I want to see what's going on here. This is important. Show me. Yeah. This is the card that when people pay twenty five dollars to open a booster pack and they eat it, or they get it, they yeah. like quit the game. It's funny because it's only card... like ten bucks. Well, it's, it's holding like real value. Oh, it was in it was in one of those remasters, yeah, it... or it was the green one, maybe the green one. Tree of Redemption was in that one. That one's that one's fun. Yeah. So nobody wants. This it's is more fun. Thing. This is this has got that effect. You know, this person's got thirteen life now. Boom. So all right. Um, where does it rank on the current thing? Um, Portal. Was Next of Us the last new one? Yeah, that one sucks. I, give the meme number I don't one. know what that is. It was number one. Number one. It's uh, uh, Portal to Phyrexia is pretty good. It's too it's good. good. Oh, that is it's so good, but fun. it's not good. It's not a meme, though. It's not good at being but a meme. It's too yes. good. It's so meme fun to make play. It's good. Meme it's number two. It. It's not it a top be, 100 I'll, meme card. I'll put it in number two. But yeah. Yeah. Hang on. I'll take number two. Yeah, yeah, let's put it number two. Yep, I agree. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, and the Portal for portal to Phyrexia still remains number one. All right. Boom. Guess <laughs> we've got some doo-doo cards. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Talking about this. doo-doo. Yeah. So, uh, down here, remaster, oh, pre-release mistake? Oh, is this supposed to happen? I know... So, I don't think it's in set boosters, but there's no one able to confirm that because I, I don't know if people have opened set boosters, but... Draft and collector boosters both have cards from new fire extra and specifically rares. And I'm assuming this has just got to be an error. I don't think this was done intentionally. I think rare sheets got put on and then somehow those filtered out into these packs, which honestly kind of sucks for like content creation because 60 of the rares have been spoiled. So that's that. Like, this. Uh, not really. No, I thought it was like 39. No, it's all but one. He had a 60. That's all but one. I think got got spoiled, but it's 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 too many because there are some that are like still floating around on Facebook. I think the initial leak comes from some guy who either owns a store that got pre release kits and just opened a bunch of them, and then was like, "Oh man, I opened up a new fire." He probably just opened one and got a new fire card. He's like, "I'm gonna open all these," and then. There what? wasn't pre-release they kept kits. Coming. Not not pre-release kits. Well, uh, whatever the draft. He, yeah, he he like opened like he's like oh I'm gonna you know I'm a, I own a shop I just opened it and he's like wait a minute these have new Phyrexia cards I'm gonna open it. and then the classic uh, is it, is that just the rules if for it to be an official leak does it have to be on a flip phone camera is that the rule I tried to take a good quality picture just because I was like <laughs> this is what they a show lot of the times like. what's happening is it's a video and someone's screen gabbing grabbing from the video yeah, that's, that's, is, is okay. what you're actually seeing. oh that fair. would make sense mm. also i like the idea of running to the go get a flip phone a lot of people don't understand how toxic work like everyone kept thinking like creatures got tokens like it would with infect but like it doesn't work that way and that's gonna be a little bit of a de- design i like how, is, toxic there, is way worse was there any toxic two cards toxic three or is it all toxic one i've only uh I want to say there was like almost like the putrefax of this set. Um, I think that was toxic too. Got it. Okay, that's all. I was curious, but so this had to be a mistake, right? Because honestly, like I think Jeff, you, when you said it earlier, it kind of takes away from the draft themes that are going on because toxic and you know whatever this draft theme is supposed to be are not going to go well together. No. So that kind of sucks. Plus, you get like random cards that don't interact oh. at all. I also lost to a Kaya, which didn't feel good because it's like I'm not like this isn't even supposed to be in this set, and I'm losing to a card because they're yeah. the thing that's like no way to deal with the planeswalkers. Yeah, because there's nothing in Dominator Remastered that deals with planeswalkers. Oh, that's old. right. Mm, that's kind of sucks. That's All right, so lame. Lame. <laughs> you have Whatever. to play creatures and hope you can kill them. Yeah. So, mm. and Kaya's gross because it's deal three, gain three. Yeah, the old lightning helix get you. Yep, All and right. it's a plus. Here's what we're doing. Um, every other content creator was like, I won't. They're unofficial. But guess what? We're not sponsored, and we're never going to be. So, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah. 
Uh, right. All right. Well, <laughs> wizards, maybe you should just put some more control into your printing. So I, I didn't look at all the rares, but in 04, that is just Grafdigger's Cage. That's it. I waited for the internet to tell me to look at which ones I should look at. Yeah, that's what I did too. Mm. This was one of them. Oh yeah, this one. This one slaps. Um, I don't know. That one minute green dude was too. Yeah, because that's busted to like. With the Phyrexian yeah. uh, spells. The Crucible players of the world are going to get upset because permanent cards in graveyard can't enter the battlefield, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, card just dies to everything, though. Cool argument. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not literally everything. Where we have exile hate now, though. Yeah. That's all right. Like, all right. Um, oil counter. So this is one of the mechanics that is kind of uh, throughout the set. I don't know if they've revealed proliferate yet, but either Maybe way. Like yeah, this is the old uh, remove ten thing, uh, ten oil counters. Proliferate has been revealed. I had a car a rare that proliferated. Okay, destroy each non-land permanent. So this is Ratchet Bomb, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. It's like a, it's literally just a better Ratchet Bomb in the sense that you get uh, oil counters that you can get up to ten. That's and then one though. Yeah, so you can't have two of them, but yeah, that's all right. And you can one shot someone, or not one shot, but but deal ten damage. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. So the oil counters are on here, and then just does that stuff. All right. So if you are playing Ratchet Bomb, there's your upgrade. Um, uh, I thought this card was fake just by the printing, but I, I don't know. Um, either way, when this first strike nope, and death Antonio touches, Antonio opened this. <laughs> oh, he did. Yeah, first strike and death touch is already a messed up combination. It's like the best blocker in the world, and then also from an attacking standpoint, it is you have to put four guys in front of it before it dies. Um, right. That's crazy. Or yeah. something else crazy. with first strike. Yeah, exactly. Or, or, or something else. Um, and then, uh, obviously, whenever t you connect, you get to draw a card and lose life. Boom. Boom. Destroy target. And wow. This card is crazy. It's pretty this strong. It's also, got a stomp standard for sure. Well, it's also like, this also hits Urza Sagas. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know that's if crazy. it's, I don't know if it's like that good, but it certainly has a lot of text on it that's like pretty strong. Carbograpes now, boys. Yeah. <laughs> I just think, I think standard for sure. Yeah, remove up to say it right now. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, this card's like super strong, right? Drawing a card, losing a life, and a 3 3 that yep. has a hard time okay. dying is great. So this that has this has tough. proliferate on it. Yeah, you're right. So this is Azuri, Stalker of Spheres, two blue green, legendary yep, creature. This is the one I opened. When Azuri, Stalker of Spheres enters the battlefield, you may pay three. If you do proliferate twice, whenever you proliferate, draw, uh, draw a card. So for seven mana, you can draw two cards and proliferate twice. Um, which is cool. I, I don't really know how else this card's this card's actually like stats and overall effect is like pretty medium at best. But if you have a proliferate themed deck, now you can draw a card every time you proliferate, which is kind of cool. And guess what? Mana. You can play this card as your commander, and you have a proliferate themed deck. Yeah, wow. Seven mana Maldrifter. Drifter. Yeah, Raise, uh, the fast lands are back. So if you guys if you didn't get the notice, you should have moved on your black leaf cliffs because they are gonna d d d d d tank. Mm -hmm. I was so mad when I opened this. <sighs> yeah, not the, even the good one. The, yeah, so uh, the, this in the blue black. Been waiting out for these forever. Yeah, so now these are going to be in Pioneer, which is great. Um, which I th I, I think our now our cycle is going to be complete for that. And then again, Black Leaf Cliffs, which is going to go down in price. You're going to see a lot more Rakdos scam decks. I was about to say, will it help multicolored uh, aggro? Yeah. So this card is Mother of Ruins. <laughs> Um, Real quick, yeah, we have the exact same mana base in Pioneer that we do in Modern now. Basically, don't we? Except the fetches are banned. That's a pretty big. Yep. That's a pretty and the bounce lands, which if, yeah. I all right. I meant like yeah, that's Phyrexian mana on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This card's like, this card. Life. This card's pretty sick. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it gives things hexproof and toxic one, and then unblockable. Which is essentially just Mother of Ruins, right? So, yeah, this is pretty good. I mean, I don't know if right. the Infect decks want this, but it's certainly like a serious card that like Infect needs because now Infect has a Mother of Ruins. So, because um, the the now you don't have to just you don't have to just live and die on uh, what's it called? Uh, the Blossoming Sands and all that stuff. I don't know if this has got a room for it or a room to play this, but the fact that I mean, Giver Runes wasn't playable because it doesn't really add to your your strategy, but this this does. Cause this it is does plus it. one poison counter because Toxic and Infect are two different things. Correct. So yep. And it can't be blocked. But, 
So one is just one infect isn't is better than none infect. Yeah, I mean the, the decks were playing like noble hierarchs. I don't know if that they, they'll want to switch to this, but dude, this is seriously like something you want to look at. It's like wow, and yes, it can't block, but again, you're you're when you're infect, if you're blocking, you're probably losing. But yeah, I saw that card. I was like, ooh. As long oh yeah, so this card I love, and the reason why is because I think um, there's some degenerate things going on here. This is all, uh, as long as it's on the battlefield, it has sure. all activated abilities of all, all lands and all graveyards. So for those people that you hate that have Gaius Cradles, you wasteland them, and that's the Gaius Cradle. <laughs> Isn't this a nice. reprint? Mm. No, what I don't think. Mirror and Safe House? No. Ability. It's activated yeah. ability, so it doesn't work with like Dark Depths or Triggered Abilities. But hey, This is a Gitrog card. It looks really sweet, right? Like What about like... um? I mean, it works with Strip Mine. And like it'll act as a strip mine. It'll act as a wasteland. It'll act as those things. So it'll act as a um. What's the one blast offers. zone? It'll act as a fetch land. <laughs> blast zone, baby. Yep. It's blast a zone. Fetch land. It's a fetch land. It's all those things. Counters. This goes. This is a good drug card. This is a, it, it'll act as a gemstone mine. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it, any on it. it doesn't have any counters on it though. Yeah. So either way, like this is. I, th oh, there's a, I think there's a home for this card. I don't know where, but this is just like one of those. And it's not just your graveyard; it's all graveyard. So there's got there's got to be something going on with this thing. So but I'm gonna play it in my EDH deck, is what you're telling me. I just like the idea of like wastelanding the guy's cradle, and then you have a guy's cradle, or whatever other lands exist. Um, Subscribe. Mm -hmm. And at the very least, you can use it as a fetch land. Um, too many words, but this is just I put this card on here because battle cries back. Um, essentially, uh, what was that card? Hero of Bladehold. Kind of the same exact thing, except you make a 1 1 Phyrexian Might instead of a 1 1 Soldier. That has Toxic 1, I can't be. And then that creature can't block. But um, let me rephrase that. Anytime that. That was busted in standard. Well, anytime it's being in combat. The, okay, so you target a creature, and let's say that creature does 7 damage. You prevent that damage and make 7 Mites instead. So it's pretty cool. I don't know. It's just Battle Cries Back. Um, Remember when that was our like uh, that hero of Bladehold? Yeah, is that the card? Yeah, it is. Yep, that card was not. It was like the F and M promo. That's when we, or that was like the pre-release promo. Yeah. Back when they gave us like fifty dollars pre-release promos. Yeah, Worm Coil Engines. That I think after. Emrakul. Yeah, Emrakul. I don't remember what new Phyrexia was, but that's when I might have stopped and downshifted. Yeah, no, it was, it that was, one was no, it was surgical extraction. I thought that was a buy box. Oh, because usually the rare was always in the buy box. But um, so the monumental facade. Um, so this card is a land, and it has a new type called sphere. Um, this card, when it enters the battlefield, it comes with two oil counters. You can remove an oil counter or tap to remove an oil counter to put it on target artifact or creature. Only do it as a sorcery, and then it also adds colors. I just put this in here because there's a new land type that's probably going to be thematic throughout the set, which is sphere. And I don't know what it means, but there's also a card that references spheres and locusts. Same with this card. Um, Murex, uh, again, add one mana of any color, activate if Murex has entered the battlefield this turn, so it comes into play and is it Rainbow Land. And then also it can, for three mana, it can create a 1 1 Phyrexian Might artifact creature token with Toxic 1. So Mites essentially are always going to be Toxic 1 and can't block. But um, a token producing land that almost does that has no effort like it's maybe a freebie in some decks i don't know seems good and also a sphere if that matters is this seed is playable just because it comes into play turn one and then can like tap for any color i don't think so because uh, i don't know that's a good question probably not but it's just one of those things where it's like is this going to be i mean it's a token generation generator for like really cheap three mana is really low like usually those kind of effects are four plus which means you need four and the land and this being one cheaper is somewhat relevant i can imagine if there's like a mono white in fact deck that this is gonna be a four x of it in there and it's also not legendary all right archfiend of the dross um i like this card only because of this <laughs> exchange of words this card's so <laughs> it won't work oh, that way that. why not Ask Josh. I know I already looked at it. No, 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 no. I read it, it wrong. It no, you guys did. It's, it, it's wrong. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from Archfiend of the Dross, which, yeah. exchange so of words, makes it the effect not be on Archfiend of the Dross anymore. 
No, the the name doesn't matter. Correct. That's it's a ruling really magic. Is, yeah. You don't have an oil to remove, so you can't. Yeah. Uh, it Archfe- work. Archfe- of the Dross and this card are the same wording. If that makes sense. Yeah. It, so here's my question. Of the name are replaced. Yes. Like he said, it says at the beginning of an upkeep, remove an oil counter. Yep. Right. There are none. And if it has it. none, you lose the game. Yes. So. If you but try to you... remove one, but there isn't one, it can't be removed. Oh, it will work. So yeah, I was wrong. Like I said. Oh, okay. Yeah, it works. It just it it tries to. It sees yeah. there's no oil counters on it. You lose. That way, it's not a three turn. Yeah. So it comes in with what four? I just like this idea of being like, hey, you lose the game, and then find a way to pick up your exchange of words and do it again. <laughs> just but, repeat. Uh, yeah. Just like. Right back. Like exchange of words, flash it in. You're gonna lose the game now, and then pick it back up somehow. Flash it back in. You're gonna lose the game now and win the hard way. <laughs> but yeah, I th- I just I thought that was cute. But yeah, it does work. All right. Um, this has a keyword on it that says for Mirrodin. Um, when this equipment enters the battlefield, create a two-two red rebel Bad. creature token, then attach it to it. Meh. You get to. This is just bad living weapon, and it's so. Yeah, it's got a four name. Yeah, four mirrored in. Uh, actually, it's not bad. Living weapon. It's actually kind of better. It is a better living it, weapon. It's just the card sucks. Because, right, the name sucks. But hang on, I don't even care about the the card sucks. I hate the name. <laughs> Blade of the, Blade of the Shared name. Souls. No, for, no, four mirrored in. I hate oh, that. Yeah, it's mechanic a, name. Yeah, that's a bad one. Worst mechanic you name. Worst mechanic. Whoever signed off on that needs to, you know. I don't know. I don't want to say what I want. I don't want to say what I was going to say, but uh, they need to. They need to be better. Be right. better. So it's got other. It says whenever blade of uh, shared souls becomes attached to a creature for as long as blade of the shared souls remains attached to it, you may have that creature become a copy of another target creature you control. So essentially, you can you know when you move it, you can copy whatever you have on the field. It's that new thing. So I was going to say, isn't this like? Three mana turn a two two into like a giant. It's beard. like it's like Phyrexian met- metamorph or metamorphs like esque. It's Except close. You don't get to come into play trigger. No, you do because whenever it attached, so it, be- it comes into play and then it enters the battlefield to create a two two and then attach it. So you definitely get to copy something. What I'm saying is, is the creature that becomes a t- the token or the creature that the token becomes a copy of, yes. if it has an ETB, that token doesn't get it. Correct. Yeah. So you're missing out on ETBs, but you just go so like it's infinitely worse than Metamorph. Oh, that's just fair. worse. Oh, well, Metamorph also can copy artifacts and is usually a pretty degenerate card because that's like an EDH. And you can pay three colorless for it. Yeah, exactly. But again, just I just wonder. Oh, what was that? Mm-hmm. There is Phyrexian Metamorph promo too. That's that was the. That might have been the. That, w- that might have been the the one for new Phyrexia. Yeah, that I think it Phyrexia. was. Yeah. All right. Um, Phyrexian Arena reprint. Oh, you better sell them off. They're about to be two bucks, one buck a piece. That is trash. Phyrexian Arena. I got three. I got three of them. I can't oh, wait to play this in standard. I'm serious. I love Why? this. I love this card. Everybody's just playing. I don't think this card's Shieldred. trash anymore. I think this card's underrated. What if you play your Shieldred? Um, and then they play theirs. It and you play this. So, let me, let Perfect. Me, great. Then I get free cards every turn means, and they don't. No, it means you still lose a life each turn. Yeah. Let me walk back on this real quick. As long as Kiki Jiki, the mirror, or the, the Fable of the uh, Mirror Breaker still exists, this probably won't see play. But in, when that card rotates out, it's gone. This, uh, this has That's some like life. two years. Uh, yeah, November. A year. This will be legal while well, that's not. I just thought that, that... No, Kamigawa doesn't rotate then the Innistrad blocks, do you? Mm, Kamigawa's part of that. Is it not? Are you sure? I thought it was only two sets to rotate. Okay, what are the sets currently in standard? All right, we have six. Uh, Midnight Hunt, yep. uh, Crimson Vow, yep. Kamigawa, Kamigawa yep. uh, New Capenna, all, yep. Dominary United, and Brotherhood. So. And then it'll be the... All is one. So the, so the no, seven no, November is when the rotation happens, and because Kamigawa came out in January, it might be saved from it. I thought so. Huh, whatever. Either way, I don't know. I just I don't. Know. I think this card has outlived its its era. Like I understand people playing in a budget EDH or fun EDH, but yeah, I don't like this card. This card just EDH. does not do enough. It's... Like it doesn't. 
It holds a good one card, one value. life. Yeah. Thanks, bud. All right. Not as good as that three mana three three that you can basically swing in with every time and never have a die and so draw been, a card for been, one life. I've been calling this card Butter Blossom. Dude, this <laughs> card's so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just one of those effects that you know it comes down really cheaply and it just <laughs> Butter Blossom. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna call it. That's the nickname Butter Blossom because it um, being an artifact might be relevant. It is. It can be. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's a lot of stuff going on with this card. I, it's hard to evaluate because the last version we had of this was like the uh, the Dreadhorde one where you just kept making one singular creature larger with and the mass. And that's why that card sucked. Yeah, so the, the fact that this has a goal oh, wide Oh, that strategy, card was still good. Not, no. Well, in limited Command it was. Dreadhorde? N- yeah, but it was it was terrible. And like It was unplayable in standard. Not Command the Dreadhorde. It, it might have been Commander that? Dreadhorde. It was something Dreadhorde. Either way, it had a mass one every turn, and you lost a life. And it was compared to Bear Blossom. This card, I think, is way Both better. These are just way better. Yeah. Yeah. They um, go wide instead of trying to pump one dude and give him menace. Right. Well, it also, like, it having artifacts, I didn't even think about that. could be pretty relevant. Like, Fairies was so, like, Bitter Blossom, if Fairies doesn't exist, it's a pretty, like, bad card in the sense of, like, it worked in combination with Spell Starter Sprite and... You could get rid of it by champion and uh, all that, all that like weird, neat interaction. Whereas we just had the Brothers Wars set that had a bunch of artifacts in there, and this could be something that's connected with it that en- ends up being like, oh, we, this this card's broken. It could be. It's just it's an enchantment that's also really hard to deal with too. You just slam it down and it just starts going to town. So invoke despair, right. but well, even again, even even with it invoke despair, like you can they can get three of your tokens. You're like, I don't care. But it's just one of those things. That's true. It comes down so early, and not a lot of decks are playing main deck enchantment hate. They can't get three of your tokens. You have to sack an enchantment if you have one. Oh, fair. You're right. Yep. But yeah, Invoked Despair is a thing. <laughs> Red Red's Sun's Red. Twilight. This is the upgraded version of By Force. This, is... this card's degenerate. This card is so goddamn good. This is... Uh, Red Red X for a sorcery. Destroy up to X target artifacts. If X is five or more, each artifact destroyed this way. Create a token that's a copy of those uh, those tokens. Gain haste. Exile them at the next beginning, at the beginning of the next end step. So, um, yeah, I just think uh, with Hinata, it's two mana. Destroy all the, the artifacts on the board and create them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That one, I think, is like, <laughs> I was like, whoo. Yeah, Hanada is a busted card. So for red, red, you essentially on an EDH table. Still got my paper ones. Yeah, I'm gonna destroy thirteen. Hanada is one of those like EDH cards you should just be hanging on to. But again, oh, I played in standard, man. Yeah, it was good in standard. All right, uh, hey. this is I'm gonna get on my 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 soapbox here. Who the Ooh. hell cares about Tyvar? I liked the the lore I learned about Tyvar. Ty- I like Vorthos stuff. And the lore I learned about Tyvar is cool. Did you know that he can, like, change his body into his surroundings? And if you look, he's got, like, Mirin armor. Yeah. That's, like, body. Yeah. Except yeah. with Tybalt. Tybalt's way cooler. But that was cool. Right. It's an interesting character design. And what? I like that they brought him back after Tybalt messed up Kaldheim, and that's where he's from. I was going to say, like, uh, <laughs> which one of these Planeswalkers destroyed a format and they had to change the ruling on a card? Yeah. <laughs> the T-Balt. Uh, so, as I, I don't know. I just saw this. Ty- did, all right. I want to know how people knew that he was completed. Tyvar? They don't. No. Tybalt. They said Tybalt's completed in this image. Probably because of his Has he got a big metal arm? Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't think he's actually completed the. There's say. also rumors that Tybalt was also Luca. Oh, like he was being an imposter. Fair. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Tybalt, I like well, him. Why him and Luca in the same set? I thought Luca was in Kaldheim the second time. He was in he was Ikoria, and then he was in something else. He was in Ikoria, and then and he then was, he was something... reprinted again. Was he in Kaldheim again? No, he was. No, he in... was in Strixhaven because he's. he's got yeah, the, the yeah. flip. Yep. Yeah, the card's poopy. But there was rumors that all the other characters make sense besides Luca. And now that this image... And then people were saying that it's going to be Tybalt coming in because Tybalt was hinted... Tybalt was, had an interaction with Vorinclex on Kaldheim where Vorinclex was like... It left like a cliffhanger that Vorinclex was going to complete Tybalt. 
Mm. So it was kind of like a cliffhanger as to where Tybalt was. And they, every other character, I guess, where I didn't read that deep. I read what I read. Had relevance to being in wherever besides Luca. And people thought that L- Luca is actually Tybalt in disguise and will be one of the completed planeswalkers. All right, that makes sense. He wants power. I don't know what. I think they just need to. War of the Spark should have ended differently. When they go back in time again, War of the Spark should actually have Nico Bolas winning and then just start from scratch, make brand new character designs that don't interact with the the new ones. I mean, I guess that's what they're doing now with, like, Tyvar. But when Tyvar came out in Kyle Time, I was like, I don't care about this guy. I, where's Garrick? <laughs> right? I was like, I don't care. Just show me. Murder them Garrick. all. No, they think he's Garrick busy gonna... eating gingerbreads. <laughs> he's a big they boy. They think if Nis, because Nis is completed. Yeah. Right, She'll if they off. think that Garrick's gonna come back, because right? there's a bunch of pe- think characters to hunt now. You want to know like, where? Point. Yeah, that's he's like Garuk doing is right something. now. He's doing something. Eating a ham sandwich. He's so in the ship, getting something. ready to drop in on whatever garbage town names are in uh, Fortnite. I think he's on Theros or something. Here's right the real. I read lore. about where Garrick was that's right now in the lore too. Let me let me just tell you the, towers, let, me just tell you yeah. the let me just tell you the real lore about Garrick. Okay. Him and Liliana had a love affair, and that was clear. She gave him a shirt, and he had to wear it in public. Okay, when he wore that shirt, everybody made fun of him, and that's when he got angry. And then he couldn't take the shirt off, so then he started hunting everybody that made fun of him. Done. That's his lore. <laughs> the chain, <laughs> <you know. laughs> I like the. I like that both Jace and Vraska are finally together. Get it as one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Completed Cause forever. Because they're, they're completed, <laughs> and all will be one. You got it. <laughs> wow, we got there. Hey. I wish I, I wish I liked I Magic Laura. I don't. I just I like my. I, I'm a, I'm an old fogey now, where it's like I want Garrick, I want Jace, I want Lily. Yeah. That's not Professor Onyx. Smash, big smash. I want big tough guys. I mean, they brought back Koth, and I was like, hell yeah. And then I was like, I read it. I was like, damn it. But but what happens when you're wrong about that card? I like all the. What happens when Garut goes and saves Frodo from Sauron at Mount Doom? He's gonna save him from Doctor Who. What are we? What's going to happen with the Lord of the Rings set? Is that going to? I think that's going to be I'll be honest. They're going to print non Lord of the Rings things in there and it's going to ruin everything. No, I think they're going to, I think that's going to be the nail in the coffin for modern. That's my hot take. For still, what? Still, so you're, uh, that's that's going to be it for, for modern. modern. Yeah, that yeah. will be It's going to be brand new cards and you got to play Frodo. That's where everybody's going to go, I'm out. Like, I'm done yep. playing this. No, and it's not because it's Frodo, it's good because they have to up the ante from Modern Horizons 2. And. I yeah. can only imagine yeah, you can't, like you can't pay for an IP and not have it be playable. Correct. So I think that's where the end of modern comes, and we all just go to Pioneer because we're like we don't want to play with those cards, and then Legacy just has to deal with the aftermath. I was about to say, come to Legacy. Mm, we got you only have to play one Frodo, I promise. I am man, I bought a play. Not today. four. Yeah, there's gonna be the Eye of Sauron, and there's gonna be an equipment that's basically Skull Clam, and it was that was GTA on one thing. Which is what happens if Frodo connects? He costs one red. If he connects, give me one waste. Get to make brown. one soul ring. Oh, so that way sorry. everyone can use their stupid uh, <laughs> altered soul, the one ring soul rings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good theory. I like it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll have an episode where we just trash that set before it's even out. <laughs> <laughs> before any spoilers, spoilers are out <laughs> you just got a one one defender is, name isn't it illegal to do like custom card creations and that's like we'll just make a bunch of lord of the ring cards of just what we think it's going to be um uh they have a new kind of phyrexian mana it's called uh ring mana and what right. it does i'm gonna give you guys a link to the wikipedia all the important articles yeah. about lord of the rings lore that i need you to read so that way we can make a real complete set gimli is gonna be top oh, tier God. We're gonna have to talk about the lady god who fights, who births Sauron and his three brothers that all fight and all that. We're all gonna right. have to figure all that out. They're all basically all gods. All care. the wizards can do whatever they want. All right. I know and this they're is... basically just Gandalf sucks. playing with everyone. I guess this is this, this, this is magic news because magic has a D and D set. But did you guys hear about the thing that happened to D and D? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, suggest we talk about the D&D news, because it is relevant, because it's wizards, and it's only a matter of time before they come after people's proxies and all that stuff. The professor. I have no idea what happened. All right. Tell me. So, the 
play license. Yeah, the play license. So some money years ago, I think it was 20 some years ago, they basically had like an open license where if anybody wanted to use like, yeah, yeah, we're like Pathfinder and stuff. And now they have a limit of if you make, I think it's $750,000 or more off our, like using our D&D rule set or have it be tangential to D&D, whether it be Pathfinder, whether it be content creators that talk about D&D, um, Wizards request that, or sorry, what Hasbro or whatever Wizards are saying, Watsy. yep, they 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 get twenty five percent of your profits, even the money. Yeah, and they have the right to like you have to destroy everything that you ever made. Right. All is very like it's, it's very depth. very so a lot of very, like. like I'm not too big in like the D and D world for like content creators, but it is causing some to go. Well, I can't do this anymore because. I have to give 25% of my profits away. So that's that. I'm out. I'm going to go find some other content to make because the risk of not paying and being forced into court by having to destroy everything I've ever made is absolutely ridiculous. So I'm can't excited. you just name it some other dumb garbage all the time? No, because it's like the rules. It's the rules. Like... Yeah. So you'd have to come up with your own rule set and because everything's like tangential to it or based off of it, they can go, well, I'll take you to court and we have all the money and we'll just drag you through. Yeah. yeah. So Pathfinder. Well, so like a lot, a lot of stuff. So about like Shadow Run. Probably yeah, the same thing. All of that. Yeah. So Shadow like Run's an RPG game. The play license was good was like back in third edition. When third edition came out, everyone, they like, uh, that's third edition. The open play license was created, and it allowed all these spin-off games to create uh, come out because they could use the rule base and they can like make it whatever they yep. could put in a way to get people into the game. And right. thus, you found things like Pathfinder and all these other games you want. And now they're trying to change it and take that away. And like Pathfinder has this foundation of all this stuff that's already been in like made books, and because... everything. It's all out there. You right, know, they're being sold in stores and so forth. So, um, if, it's, but because it's all based off of when this open game license was like around, yeah, like uh, and it was also like, a nothing they can do. It was a promise that they that this will never be reversed. This open gaming license, and now that it is, everybody that's made something such right. as Pathfinders and right. so forth are just like, oh crap now anything that we produce going for, i don't know if they're, i don't know if they're going to go back on what they've currently made but again these projects um including digital files or anything like that can also um i mean let, let's say if i wanted to make a D book right and i wanted to use ravnica as like the base i would and let's say it became successful it was sold in stores and i somehow got it upstarted i upstarted it and got it you know off to people's shelves and people started playing it. If I ever became, uh, if it was ever lucrative in money, if I ever got to a profit margin of 750,000, well, now they just get to go, well, we take 25% of that and probably all of all future earnings. And if and I all your that, originals, yep. Yep. And they get all that. So let's um, print real reserve list. Come on. Do like, it. That's what I, that's make your money. That I was looking for before. So it was like all these like old modules that of D and D yep. that were like, totally like fan created and have been around for ages are now subject to this new open Rural. gaming rules that yep. they're that are the controversy right now yeah weird and so much of like D D that is popular and what D D is is just like this set of rules right that exists the whole reason D D took off is because like you could it, all it took was one guy having the book and like six friends and it was free yes and like now wizards is coming in saying ah ah don't be free. We we need to make right. our money. It's like free anymore. Ever since like Hasbro like sold out, yeah. Or Wizards or like Hasbro w like was desperate and was like, you know what? We're gonna milk our cash cow and all yeah. the suits came in, like all of it. Suits. Just... It's always the suits. Right. I said that. Suits are back. Remember you guys? You guys remember you guys gave tongue in cheek? Yeah, like, you're it's funny. real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> That's why it's real. anytime that we need a bit that Josh has to be suits. when we when we pretend that he's Watsy, Josh has to wear a suit. But again, it's 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 um. All right, Jeff. What do you think of the suits? <laughs> what suits? Nothing. The suits. So you know the suits. Uh, Hasbro. Yeah. Suits. The Hasbro We're suits that are now infiltrated wizards. So a whole. Get rid of the reserve list. Let's go. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, come on. Let's do it. Let's I don't care. Stop. Cra crash your market. Here we go. Did reprint. Once twice more duels for me. Come here. Yeah, they did print them. They're right. <laughs> I got them right here. You jealous? 
<laughs> and if you think it's not going to happen again with all the Urza Saga stuff, how many? You know how? You know what people want? Oh, you yeah, didn't open you know. it yet. Yeah, I'm waiting for the do, do the draft. It's not happening. Shut up. Nobody's doing that. <laughs> I will be doing you know, that. You know Literally what's more no. popular than a Black Lotus? <laughs> on the reserve list and don't. people want packs of? Oh, my God. We can go into that, too. I forgot about that. Don't. Um, I hate that. The saga that has Gaia's Cradle in it. Yeah. Which is the most desired commander card. Wait, what? If you don't think that's coming, like you're out of your mind. No, you're right. He is right. Cradle. Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about that wizards employee who like open magically open. We have to talk about that too. We have to talk about. All that. right, let's do it. It's that so unreal. Get that photo up. Put I will make fun up. of them forever for this. Right. All right, I'm pulling it. Oh my god. Give me a second. I gotta get the info. Hold on. Did you'll you see, see this photo of the wizards employee that opened his anniversary pack. <sighs> So, he like posted pictures on a Discord and was like, check out my yeah, cool rips. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Reddit being Reddit, obviously did. Right. Okay. It's still, it's a, like, it is what it is. So give me some context. It's a, very, Go it's a very poor look. I would not have done that if I was like, <laughs> be, be thorough real quick. What, what, what was, what, what exactly happened? I'm going to pull up the phone. Uh, I'll hang on. All I know, the, the only thing that was relevant to me, all I needed to see and all I did see was that it was a Discord photo of a guy with the Watsy handle, Watsy, whatever his name Watsy is. Watsy Jesse, like, yeah. Finally decided to open my uh, 30th anniversary pack. It's silly. And he opened the old bordered Black Lotus, the most designed. Oh, I did see game. that, yeah. And then right. he showed like the rest of his pool and there's like a Mox Jet 2 and like a there's a dual land. So well. I don't care that he opened opened them. My issue is it says felt silly at first, quickly changed my mind, which is them trying to sell. Yes, this is totally worth it. Trust me. You'll yeah. open cool <laughs> pulls like this. It's like, no, you won't. No, you will yeah. never. Yeah. I mean, I right, think there's a, a yours right no, now. I want to do something cool with this. I, 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 I'm, yeah, tr I'm, tr open I'm truly hopefully to draft it. And then when I win, I will also open the packs that I win because I'm the champion of the champions. So but yeah, People just champion. the idea that he's like, oh, just like you guys, I thought it was stupid. But this then, watch, look what I got, and it's like, look. no, it's super cringy, the worst right? Sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, it's... this is like you know that like that from uh, Zombieland where he's like wiping the tears off his eyes with like a hundred dollars, real hundred dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Woody watch, Harrelson, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How fast did he get bullied out of this Discord channel? Either oh, way, man. it's just it's it's just it lo it's such a bad look. And he was like, I was on your guys' side until I got the most expensive thing, and now it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? You just opened up fourteen thousand dollars? Expensive stuff too. Yeah, man, you're oh, you're really tight. God. Yeah. All right. My MTG flex. It's just this is going to be a thing that just sucks for a long time. Like just, the thing is, it could be it could be honestly, it could just be fake. It could be I could change my handle too. Watsy underscore Jesse right now. Yeah. I have no idea if this is fake, but I hope it isn't. I want it to not be fake so that I can I... laugh about it yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to have a Watsy tag on there. It sounds like harassment. <laughs> it sounds like a way to just get bullied. Like you're right. <laughs> Either way, it's, it's, it's really loose about this and the you idea. Yeah. The average magic player, they're mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. I don't really think too much of it, but um, this week is the pre-release, I think, officially for Dominaria Remaster, or is it the release? It's got to be the release. So it's the release, so go out and draft that. That sounds like a fun set. I'm probably going to try to do one draft on Friday, sneak that in because it can be a short amount of time, and then spend the rest of my time playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon versus everybody at the store. Yeah. <laughs> I got so many decks. Dude, I got I got, I got a huge bulk amount of cards in. Dude, it's funny because I spent like $80, and I've built four decks. Like the the only card that I spent any real money on was Dunk Would Do it was just twenty two bucks and everything else is just bulk. Pennies on pennies on pennies. Yu Gi Oh bulk Yu Gi Oh everything is worthless. <laughs> There's like just no value in that game. But it's Where is the value? Uh it's usually the, the newest cards. set. Hand the, traps. The, yeah, the newest set usually has the most degenerate thing going on. So it forces people to buy it to be tournament competitive. Um and it's usually the one in like three box where it ends up being about a hundred bucks. And then eight months later, they throw it into a tin and then the tin reduces it down to one, the format gets stale and then they ban it. And then the cycle continues. Nice. Do you want to talk about an ever changing format? Yu-Gi-Oh is that. Yeah, it is. It's it's, it doesn't need a rotation because there's bans <laughs> all yep. the time. 
or errata, which Undance too. Yeah, but again, all right, dudes. Um, that's all I really and got. Japan and America have two different ban lists. Yeah, but I'm excited. Uh, unfortunately, with like New Phyrexia, or sorry, Phyrexia all will be one. The only spoilers that anybody's on the lookout for is now commons, uncommons, and mythics. Um, meh. You know, but from a uh, my spoiler season was taken away, so I won't be able to get more followers. Urgh! But yeah. Um, hey man, I'm happy to have cheap fast lands again. Yeah, those would be nice. To be a pioneer. And there's definitely gonna be pimped versions of them, but didn't they do like pimped versions of them recently? Uh, they're yeah, they were in um. Because I have like a really cool Zendikar like, Rising. There you go. Like box toppers and collector packs. Is it is it Zendikar Rising? Yeah. 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 All right, dude. That's gonna be it for oh baby. The... So I looked at his full pack pulls. Yeah, this is just all gas. He I got, got land, he the, got demonic the, the tutor. Or... He got birds. He got chaos or new border chaos old bo uh, uh, old border scrubland scrubland swords and uh, hypnotic specter. Those are all cards that people know and like. It yeah. was not a single like this is a garbage card I've never seen in my life. <laughs> He didn't get like demo well, the demonic attorney is not in it, but he didn't get like blank soldier, Savannah Lions. Yeah, he didn't get like any of those like trashy rares that you're like, ugh. Yeah. What the hell is that? Oh, Healing dude, um... salve. Yeah, Someday. I mean the meme. I Thought lace. <laughs> yeah. Thought yeah, lace. Fourth in the draft, and I got the the full art. Um, what is that? Archmage's charm. I think you could open. Oh yeah. But I traded it because it's like eleven dollars, so I traded it for the full art birds from Dominary Remastered. I'm super hyped for it, and then Juan was like, "I need a birds. You have to trade this to me." And I was like, "All right, fine." <laughs> I, I forgot what I got. I picked up a bunch of stuff from him. But All right, buds. I helped someone out build their legacy deck. Win, more. win. All right, Josh, hit us win, with no matter time. what. Get us out of here. Literally, no one should be happy that it's 50 degrees in January. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is Wednesday, cool. my dudes. All right, dudes, we're in the after show. Any can callers, any takers? The Packers in the playoffs. We can talk about that. Right, that's fine. <laughs> I'll eat crow. Yeah, that's fine. But I'd <laughs> rather <laughs> lose that than lose. The, I'm gonna eat. Uh, what's the land, what's the card I said? Thought erasure if Antonio. Oh, I oh wait, no, I said I would do it if he made, if he makes the pro tour. Yeah, he will. He I will. hope he does. I want. I hope he does too. So I'm gonna spoil one. All right, what we got so going? It's gonna be even harder to digest. We got any callers? Call we got any repeat callers? I think Matt Bar. Matt Is this Barrett okay for me to turn the car on? Yeah, you can do whatever. You're good to go. <clears throat> All right. Lord of Salt, he's hanging out. Hell yeah, we'll bring him back in. All right, I'll be back. All right, dude. Lord of Salt. Yeah, he's our Australian friend. Uh, nice, 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 nice. Mm, just gotta change his. I gotta do one thing to his profile. I'm getting in here, getting you in here, bud. Give me one second, and I'm pulling you in. But I have to go. I have to. Bye, Jeff. Oh wait, no, hold on. We're still doing the live stream. Yeah, we're live. Anyone still listening? Um, yeah, my they are, D &D of course. group lost our fourth person, so we need one more to start our campaign. So if anyone wants to play D and D, we are gonna play over roll twenty. Shoot the podcast a message; it'll get to me, or um, hit me up on Facebook. All right, cool. Cool. But I gotta go because I gotta go figure out some more stuff. You guys have a good one. All right, Lord of Salt, how you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Yourself? Good, man. How? Give me some updates. What? What? What are you rocking? EDH? Who'd you punk? Well, have you seen the new um, Moxel at us? Oh, the four, the blue three. Yeah, if it's it's just one yeah. side. It's just your stuff, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But the fact is, in the right deck, like artif artifact decks and stuff like that, it's going to be really good. Or um, blue red with Dockside will oh, help. Hell yeah, dude! That, I didn't even think about that. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, how do you like the? Let me ask you this: Do you think it's actually spoils? Spoil? Or did you think this is an unintentional leak? Look, when I see the deck, when it drops, it drops. If it doesn't, oh, well, gives Wizards an idea of what we're looking for anyway. Sure, sure. What, what I'm saying is, do you think that they were they meant to put the the rares in the packs, or do you think this is, uh, we screwed up and then this didn't happen? Hey, with the way Hasbro's been running things lately, who bloody knows? <laughs> fair point, fair point. <laughs> All right, man.
That's sick, dude. Um, all right. And then actually, is... oh, go on. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, I was gonna say, uh, a couple of friends of mine and I, we went to a different LGS last night. Nice. Um, the way they run their commander stuff is they've got casual, mm-hmm. regular, and tuned. tuned. That's the way they call their yeah. Okay. Casual is literally pre-con. That's I mean that's cool. Unmodified. That... Yeah. All right. Yeah. Tuned is uh, sorry. Uh, regular is literally modified pre-con. So just whatever you. This is my theme deck. I'm playing this, and I've upgraded 10, 15 cards. Yep. Then tune is from turn five onwards. Is, is this the Wait first? Time, is this the first? Is, oh, that's I guess so you, there, it's not CDH. Did you guys? Is this the first time you guys went to the shop? Yes. Okay. And then how? What was the crowd like? Was it actually pretty busy, or was it just like uh, yeah, we came to dominate? <laughs> oh, okay. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. Um. So the three of us, we kind of kept away because we realized quite a few of our decks were a little bit more powerful than what everyone else is playing with. Mm-hmm. We had um, one guy come over and ask to play with us. So we kind of got a bit of the oppression. He's the top dog there and he wanted to try and <laughs> put a bit of um, authority down. Yeah. Um, my mate with his Crick deck won on t- turn two. Yeah. <laughs> so his so, deck went on, won on turn two? No, no, my friend did. Oh, okay, okay. So you guys, you guys gave him the business. Yeah. Nice. He um, was so dumbfounded. He allowed my mate to win, and he had a pack of negation in the hand. Well, I guess he would have spite lost, right? Because he wouldn't have been able to pay for, pay for the pack unless he had Angel's Grace. Um, no, no, he could have counted, um, what is it, Chain of Smog coming in. No, what I'm saying is if he, if he counters it, doesn't he just lose? Because he's got the pack. He can't pay for pack, right? Oh. Um, he's da- damned if he did, damned if he didn't. Yeah. Either way, he wasn't going to play with mm. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then he just proceeded to because we we play on yeah. once the first person wins. Yeah. Um, the dude then started picking on my other mate, who literally had a land and mox amber on the field. And he's just like, I I, I just drew dead. And I'm just stuck. Please. And then he's like, I'll just beat you up because it makes me feel good because I've already lost. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so we had a good old laugh over that. It happens to me all the time though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, right, I don't want to hear it. There's, there's, there, I, I have this idea that what I want to start promoting is, well, the FNM end boss, right? And then you essentially you treat it like a Pokemon gym where you are the gym leader and anybody B2, you, you're required to give them a badge of some sort. That'd be cool. I mean, that's the only way. I, I never lose, so I don't have to give out any badges. That just doesn't happen around here. Yeah, that's bullshit. <laughs> Stop lying. It's never happened. I Do you know how happen. many times I beat you in Yu-Gi-Oh before you finally got a couple wins? First on off, me? that's that's like that's like beating a like a, what is it? Shorts kid, whatever that guy is from Pokemon. Shorts cool, kid. Short kids. Youngster Joey. <laughs> yeah, Joey. Youngster, it's yeah. like beating Youngster Joey. Okay, but in a wait, you're comparing yourself to Youngster Joey. You're that terrible. Well, in Yu-Gi-Oh, yes, because I like playing my fun decks. But um, I have no. I mean, if something's on the line, I'll turn it on. You know, but if we're playing for funsies, I don't give a shit. I don't. I don't really care. But uh, when there's something on the line, tournament Tony comes out, and now I'm serious. <laughs> Even if it's just one bulk rare, I don't care. If something's one bulk rare, <laughs> Magic is so much more fun to me when there's something on the line. It, it could be anything. It could be like, like I get the last bite of your cheeseburger if I win. That's what it. You know, something as small as that. But it, as soon as something becomes on the line, it's I. My interest is peaked. Whereas if like playing for fun. I don't care what happens. I could. It doesn't mean anything to me. I need. I need the idea of being able to take something from you. <laughs> that's where. That's where my fun and magic is. Is taking something from somebody else. I mean, we could just bring back Anti. Yeah, that is true. But we'd have to play Good a real luck. format. Anti, like the, the downside. I, when we were playing that fun, fun five, I got well. When we were playing five color, I don't know if you know this, Lord but we have. Uh, there's a format that started in. It might have been popular uh, in the Midwest a long years, time ago. a long time ago, but this is essentially EDH before EDH was a thing, where it was called Five Color, which is a 250 card deck, and it started off as 4Xs of everything, and you truly did play for Anti, and you know you would just 
play and when we were playing it we realized how unfun it was to search a 250 card deck constantly so that just immediately turned me off of the format i was like i don't want to play this anymore because half the time you're fetching searching looking for whatever and also makes green like the most degenerate color just because it's super consistent um to be playing green cards but anyways that was like a thing in the midwest but do you uh do you uh have any dominary seals in your area or releases in your area yeah, yeah, um, pretty much every card shop is basically doing one this weekend. Oh, that's nice. Um, I have um, seen, like, obviously each store opens a bunch of cards. Obviously, they can't be sold to yeah. release day. Um, I really hate that rule. Just stop. They did. There's just, That is stopping with the newest set. Um, it should be right now. It, it, you just ignore it. One. Yeah. On yeah. on the day we draft is the day we're allowed the cards now. Yeah, it's it's just the best. That's the best way to go about it. And, yeah. Right. So I've seen a couple of stores or a couple of people who have grabbed their stuff and got ready for the weekend, got them already open, so singles are ready to be sold. Yep. Um, they started cracking a case of like draft. The, there's just nothing in them. Like no, they no gas. No. Nah. Oh, just the worst cards. So ever. all the money cards, all the money cards that you want, it's collectors only. <sighs> that sucks. I mean, honestly, because I'm gonna buy a collector booster and, for this, and usually me and my wife open it. I'm really just looking for the old border foil force wall. That's all I really give a, all I care about. The pull rate for tutors is, you could almost guarantee a full set. Oh, so um, even with vamp in a like... in a box. Oh wow! In a box. Those are what are they? Oh. It's mystical, enlightened vamp, gamble, and I can't. It's... And worldly, worldly. Yep. Yep. It's worldly's um first full art or borderless, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, those are good pulls. Those things are always like it's it's one of those things that it'll they will dip and then go back up. I mean, I just looked at the price of like a mana crypt. Those things are up plus one fifty. Man, those things yep. those things get out of hand quick. And um, I think it was like last episode we went over just like I put a poll on Facebook and a lot of the comments I got were just I want a mana crypt. So many people want a mana crypt because it, I don't know if the EDH community has considered mana crypt to be taboo or not, but I think everybody's like cool with having two soul rings now. Well, it's the fact that I always find mana crypt one of those two edged sword two-edged knives yeah um because we typically the way we play especially when we're playing competitive we won't drop that to we need it Mm -hmm. because you you flip a coin or you roll the dice wrong multiple turns in a row that's a huge chunk of your life disappeared yeah of course nine but it's also sometimes you get to go mana crypt soul ring you know thing and you're like oh okay well you just went off yeah you know but in those situations you are off it's just, but either way, I think a lot of people just want to have a mana crypt, and I think mana crypt is one of those things that people are looking at. It's just this is soul ring number two, and I want a second soul ring. Whereas, yeah. not a lot of people play Grim Monolith really. Like there are decks that play it, like from a CDH standpoint, but the other versions of those artifacts, where they're you know cheaper mana for a, like mana vault, even um, a lot of decks don't like those. But people love mana crypt, and it, it's just I was really surprised and. The price speaks for itself because every person that gets a mana crypt typically doesn't trade it. It goes into an EDH deck and then it's lost there forever. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, dude. I've I've still got to pick one up for um, Arkham Daxon. Mm. Um, but other projects have gotten in the way at the moment. Yeah. Do you play any D and D? Uh, actually, a group of us just started D and D. Don't get too popular. Um, you got the pay wizard twenty five percent. Yeah, <laughs> I I think in my life I've gone through like thirteen, fourteen mana cribs just because like it's I can't. Sometimes you need two hundred dollars, and sometimes you want. It mana comes cribs. and goes. I just I, I I have three right now, and it's just like hey, you know what? I'm just like a, in my you know the podcast model always only consume, never sell. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, do you, do you, did you just start? You just said you just started. Um, what's it yeah, called? Yeah, we just started another D and D. We're just doing fifth ed. Um, 
But what we're doing with this one is the four of us all have a character each, including yeah. the DM. Mm. Um, but each week, one of us will DM. Yeah, it's, so uh, it's not just one person. Yeah. So this storyline, we've got an idea of the base end story and what the world's like. Mm-hmm. Getting to the final thing, who knows what the hell's going to go on there. Well, especially because you're alternating then. Or the DM, which can kind of well, the best part about D and D is it, the 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 DM should allow the players to dictate where they go and not try to get them structured on. I want you to go this path because this is my story. Just let the party decide where they're going to go. And with alternating DMs, you should be able to do that. We, the way we play is very much that we. It's up to what we decide to do as players as we're playing. Yeah. Um, the only problem is we can end up buying bakeries or buying houses or having castles <laughs> in our name. I mean, that's what ends up happening, and then you retire those characters, and they just are lore in your current story. Well, people get thrown up through windows or thrown out <laughs> of windows or... Like, then memes start happening between us from stuff we've said or accidentally said or yeah yeah just especially with the way we are in our group you say the wrong thing for weeks on end you'll be held accountable for it <laughs> yeah we call I, we, we do the same thing um how, how i am online and how i am in the podcast is a is a uh reserved tony if you will but in person yep. if if i if like as you would say if we were mates um i i i try i try not to be as degenerate as i once was but i enjoy delving into the nonsense oh yeah There's, all right boys it, i'm hopping out bye jeff i'll see y'all later jb I should say. yeah way to slip bud yeah <laughs> It's like an Australian tradition here. Like, you stuff something up, everyone jumps on your back over it. <laughs> like, um, we were playing Star Finder for a few months there. Yeah. And um, one of my mates is like, what do you want to wear a space suit? Like, because um, we're in space. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> and I like that. It, that Throughout the entire campaign, that was the running joke. Because <laughs> we're in space. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> cargo road? No, cargo space. <laughs> so, nah, it's all in like fun and having a joke and having a laugh if we're playing. Yeah, I mean, that's... But, I, um, most people I interact with... you. I, I, I don't know. There, I'm sure you've dealing with the magic community. You dealt with some really rigid folk, and not that they're not allowed to be there. It's just they can suck the fun out of the room, and it's like yeah, the old rule Nazis. Yeah, you're like oh, okay, cool. Yeah, all right. And then that, like, I mean, are the there are people that when I go to Afton, there are people that I, you know, group with, and then when we are alone in our corner, being who we are, um, it's fun. And then most of the time, I'm, I'm uh, very pleasant with everybody else in the room but i also i uh, i like being an argumentative person so i do just like arguing for the sake of arguing so if anybody says something even if i believe it to be true i will like to play devil's advocate and that's probably a downfall of me but i just <laughs> like ar- i just like arguing it's kind of my thing <laughs> there's um there was one night i don't know what happened a group of us were up in the back corner of the shop mm-hmm. at the local lgs and we were using, because there's a Macca's next door, we are using Macca spoons to flick dice at each other. <laughs> Lo and behold, mine's left a dent in the roof. Oh, all right. <laughs> you, oh, the, oh, yeah. You, what did you call it? A, a Macca spoon? Yeah. What is that? I'm not, I'm not Macca's, familiar. McDonald's. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's Aussie slang. For... That's all right. That works. Let's go. You guys call it Macca's? Yeah, we call it Macca's. <laughs> like, like um, it. we've got Burger King here, but it's not called Burger King. It's called Hungry Jacks. Okay. Does it have, does it have a thing called the Whopper? Yeah, yeah. It's got the same kind of gear and everything like that. It's oh, sure. just 
when they came to Australia, someone already had the name here in Australia. Mm-hmm. So they had to rename it something else. Mm, got it. Funny. Um, I was going to say, we're in the last probably five, six years, we finally got Taco Bell over here. And um, I don't think we got much more, really. Taco Bell. Like, obviously, KFC. Yeah. I was assuming, so what do you guys have that are like Australian founded fast food if you guys have any? Um, GYG is probably the only real fast food that we've got. We got Boost Juice, I think, which is um, it was an Australian founded one. Sure. Uh, um, and then we got Red Rooster. I think it's another Australian one, which is just like. Um, KFC in a sense. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like the, kind of the same thing. I mean, KFC's, I mean, fast food uh, to me, it's Taco Bell's number one, McDonald's probably number two, and then I everything else is just like whatever. But I, as much as people give crap on McDonald's, I love it. I don't, I love trash food. I don't care. Yeah, I just wish they'd get people to, um, or at least train the kids to make the food a little bit nicer. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's <laughs> I, well, that's I have a so again with the with, with the rule. If I'm picking up food for like a group of friends, and I'm like, what do you want? And like, I'm, I'm going here. What do you want? And if they give me a custom order, they don't get anything because they will always, and I mean always, mess up the custom order. And then they'll look to me as like, yep. I'm not checking it. I just they 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 have the basics down in there. Just do the basics. If you don't want tomato, you are going to probably end up with double the tomatoes. So don't like just pick it off yourself. So yep. you don't end up with the extra tomato juice. I don't know how else to say it, but just no custom orders because I've always get guys. Can I get this with this? And then they screw up the order, and then they're angry. It's like also when they screw up the order. For most of the time, it's not major. It's like oh they well, I didn't want pickles, and they added pickles. Oh no, like my life's not ruined, you know. But some people will take it too far, and they just get out of hand with it yep. like, are you really gonna cry over a couple bucks like just take your loss and move on with it man and if you're gonna dwell on it I, uh, you might want to rethink how you spend your time you know yeah i've got a mate who won't have lettuce on his burgers and i'm just like <laughs> really <laughs> he gets cranky every time they send after he asks for it and they send it and he's got it on it i'm like just pick the fucking thing off and eat yeah I, that's what that's it's what it comes not down the to. End of the world. <laughs> yeah, if if you don't if you don't do that, it's just the the way it is. But yeah, it's no customer. It, now, if you're going to a place like 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 I don't know what you guys have a high class food out there, uh, but we have like steak places that run like about fifty bucks, seventy five dollars a plate, and they can go kind of higher than that. If I ask for like a a rare steak and it comes out well done, I'm gonna send it back. Like that that's a different thing. Yeah, that's fair. But I'm also spending seventy five plus dollars a plate, so it's like, yeah, I kind of need you to get my food right. But, um, yep. Other than that, it's like you know, fast food. It's all, it's all slop, if you will. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, the actual, I just realized. Um, we also got Carl's Junior over here as well. Yeah, that's. I think that exists here, but we don't have them in the Midwest. It's Hardee's. It's the same. They're just clones of each other. They're one to one. Like they yep, might be, yep. they might be ran by the same company. Do you guys? Do you do board games? out there with like, your friends yeah yeah um i've got uh the wolfenstein board game i've got um super dungeon explorer one and two and i've got the season one two three and second edition of zombie side i've seen zombie side i've never played it dungeon explorer oh, this uh, super dungeon, so we tried this me and my me and my wife um painted a bunch of these figures um, we tried playing it and then we didn't enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe it was, the painting was more fun, but I was actually drawn into the, the minis, to be honest with you. I just hated gluing them together. Yep. <laughs> I, I really did because um, I, I sucked at that stuff, but you know, and painting it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, Zombie Side is a really good game um, because it's not you. Like, not one person being the zombies and then, you know, whoever else is playing versing you. It's yeah. you are a survivor and you who you just have to complete some missions mm. and survive against the zombies because the zombies move by themselves. So they have their own little mechanic. Yeah. Um, is it like the game Pan- – I don't know if you've ever played Pandemic, but is it similar to that? No. Nah. Okay. Got it. Um, 
But mm-hmm. like with Zombie Side, there's like your modern day style of Zombie Side. Then there's a sci-fi one. There's a medieval one. Yeah, I'm seeing that. It looks pretty sweet, uh, dude. Gears and Gods. Then I think there's a Marvel one now. Oh, <laughs> that I mean that would be pretty fun to if you end up with like yeah. a zombie Captain America coming after you and it's like oh he's a super soldier you're gonna have to figure out a way to do it. Dude, this looks this looks great. I like games where it's like so there's the style of game like my all time favorites are like deck building games. There's like Ascension. Um, uh, I can't remember that what the other I, I'm drawing a blank here, but it's the most Dominion. Those ones are really popular. Where it's like you have like a, a market that everybody buys from, and then you just build your deck, and as the game progresses, your deck gets more and more degenerate um, as you play the game. But those are like my favorite. But Sounds like magic. <laughs> it is, I, dude. I, 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 there's a joke between my friends. It's like if Tony's not playing it, if it's not a deck building game, because I just love them. I have like six different ones. Um, they all are the exact. They're just clones of each other. But I just I love playing them. And then um, co-op games like Zombie Sound. That's what it sounds. Zombie Side sounds like. I might give that one a try because yep. we we usually um when someone has to be like a singular DM or whatever. It's I think that's what you have to do in pandemic. There's one guy running everything, and then everybody else is kind of against it. But it sounds like if the game does it have like a card system where it's like flip card do the effect, and then you guys have to try to survive whatever that effect is, and it's randomized, or is it just like you do something and uh, then a little thing. bit. So you each pick a – you can randomly pick a survivor or you can just pick a survivor that you like. Yeah. Um, but then there's spawn points for the zombies. Sure. So each of the survivors will have their t- their actions, do what they've got to do. Yeah. yeah. Then the, survi- uh, the zombies will spawn uh, – sorry, well, the zombies will move that mm-hmm. are on the field yeah. towards, towards you and then – you spawn in the next lot of zombies as well. Cool. Um, I have between all the zombie side I've got, I think I've got close to six hundred zombies. Like as in like the minis to play with. That way you just keep yeah. spawning them. Damn, yeah. dude. Have you painted all of them, or yeah. do you have some blanks? I'm in the middle of painting them, and <laughs> I get so far, so much of it done, and then I'm done. Yeah, you so just... I'll give it a break. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I got my mates who'd never played the game before recently to have a game. And I think the game, because obviously we shit talk as we're playing it. Yeah. I um, <laughs> think the game ended up being about three hours long and we just, by the skin of our teeth, we survived. Yeah. Like, we had, I think, about 30 zombies on the field because you got the tiles that give you the map to actually play on. Then you got your survivors and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, the this... good thing about Zombie Side is because I went in for the Kickstarter for the last, edi- uh, the second edition they did for the first Zombie Side. Yeah. Um, I've got Donald Trump. I've got Barack <laughs> Obama. I've got the Queen. I've got um, President uh, Clinton. Um, That's pretty funny. So I can play. The Queen's got a minigun, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Um, but then they did the Big Bang Theory. They've done like Dude, they're John all Wick. Over, yeah. I'm looking through all their stuff. They got so much. This is a, like this is a really huge thing. And this, I'm assuming they started with a Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter on this, and it's just completely grown. They got so many different, uh, con, like different, um, expansions. Where I see like there's dog companions. Uh, there's yep cheerleader special guest i like that too they've, they've done a lot with this and obviously they got yeah there's a ton of stuff this looks like a blast i might i might pick this up i'll see if they have one in my local shop because typically with board games i just try to go to my local shop for that um they probably they, yeah, they gotta yeah. have it but and i like painting minis well, I think cool, cool minis and not is um an american company anyway so yeah hey, that's that's what it looks yeah. like but damn dude this thing looks dope and there's right now there's a classic yet sci-fi Living Dead. Not a Living Dead might be a one I want to start with because I got a buddy who absolutely loves this movie, so I might just pick that one up right yep. away. Oh, I think they did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles recently. Um, they've done a Batman release as well. Damn, they're not um, dicking around. Hey, they they got like they got that's a ton of licensing. My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they do pretty much. When they do a release of this kind of stuff, it's always a Kickstarter first. Yeah. So you do get a ton of exclusive stuff via the Kickstarter. Sure. Like, I think I went in, the last one cost me over 600 bucks Australian. Sure. Um, but I've got, like, 
um, what was that? It was the second edition of Zombicide Season 1, the the two expansion packs, which was Washington, DZ, and Fort Henrix. Then I got extra, I got the 30 days of zombies. So I've got like um, the village people, I've got lion dancers, <laughs> I've got a lawnmower dude. So he's walking around with a whippersnapper. <laughs> um, like there was a whole heap of only for this Kickstarter, can you get these models? Yeah. Um, and seeing the quality jump in the detail from the first zombie side to what they released for the second edition yeah, was a huge jump. And the rule change that they did from season one, first ad to yeah. second ad, second ad is so much quicker and so much faster with the way it plays. Sure. And a little bit easier too. Yeah. This first edition, you could just get swarmed by zombies and you didn't have a way to deal with them. I'm going to have to try to pick up this. I don't know if this is season one, which is at the OG. There's season one. Yep. But then there's season one, second edition. I got to find it. Which I'm, is probably I'm, the more. That's got to be on their website. Because hey? I'm seeing that it's the standalone. Because yeah. I, want, I want to get the base set and then play it. Um, I'm assuming, does the yeah. goals typically change every time? Um, There's missions you can play. Sure. Um, there's actually an RPG for it now as well. Oh, wow. Um, you choose the mission which dictates the, the map, or you can make your own missions up. Like, it's free range how you want to play it. It's up oh. to you and the group who's playing it. Cool. Like, I'm, I'm just looking over this up. This seems like a blast. I like the idea that you get, like, a character card, and then you set up, like, equipment on it. And uh, Yep. Yeah, dude, this thing looks dope. I was a big If fan. you're looking at second, uh, cool. second edition... Yep. The um, character cards will be almost square, and they sit on like a little red plate. Yeah, I got to pull up. I'm looking at it right now. It looks really cool. Yeah. Um, now, to quickly go back to MTG, yeah. have you noticed that Phyrexia All Will Be One, there's 200, I think, 72 cards that are for the standard set. Okay. But this, the card list is 700-something cards long. That's because doesn't doesn't everything have like four editions of it? There's like a like for Elishnor, I think there was six. Is it six different copies of it? There's like the the, the regular, the full art, the Phyrexian version, the oil spilled version, and then there's in full yep. art. It, yeah, it's and then the the manga the, version. Yeah. Yep, but so. then I don't think all the Praetors that they're reprinting in this set will be standard legal as well. Sure. Huh. So, we're basically getting two sets in one, which obviously is going to make um, pulling cards, you know, quite difficult. Instead of it just being like a 400-card set, sure, whatever, we've got basically, what, two sets in one and somehow pull rates. Hmm. So, because we're like, hang on, they're going to put Sheldred back in for a second go they're gonna put for um yeah. brown packs in again yeah and then we look down at the bottom of the cards there's a number but there's no slash out of the number sure so we've worked out that there's only 270 which will be standard legal but there's gonna be 300 that are not plus yeah well maybe 100 that well, are not. Um, no there's another four to five hundred that's not well, of those four or five hundred, two hundred seventy-two 272 of them, or at least close to, will be standard legal because it's in standard. And like yeah. Borenklex, for example, won't won't be legal, but yep, it will be in the set. Yeah. That's, that's only confusing new players. I don't mind that they do that stuff, but it is confusing to somebody that's like, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to go play standard and I'm going to go play a Borenklex. And the guy across from me goes, well, that's not legal. It's like, I just opened it in the new pack. How is it not legal? You know. Which yep. I hate when they do that, but um, they, they did the same thing with Strixhaven and also uh, Brothers War with the retro artifacts, right? So it's it's kind of the same deal. Yep. Um, the other thing is we found it a bit funny because they said that those oil lands and the oil cards have a raised foiling on them. Now, yeah. isn't there a ruling in the Magic rules that basically says you 
basically got to play with the flat card. Yeah. Due so to the fact that. Yeah. Did you? I don't know if you heard about that that uh, collective company um, issue that happened about no? seven weeks ago. It was at an RCQ. A guy got DQ'd because essentially he had the the promo collective companies that came from the secret layers. And because of how yep. that foiling process was, his opponent was, and so was the judges, they were able to cut to it every single time, meaning that if somebody were to cut the deck, like, just by feel, you could always cut to having a collected company on top of your deck. And then you end up getting yep. DQ'd, which, that's, with those raised foils, that, that's more of, like... <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if Magic the Gathering is just trying to get into more. I mean, it is like the premier thing to get like besides baseball cards to get what do they call it? like put a slat on it so you get it graded, and I think that's where like yep. some of this stuff is going where they want people to open up the one of like you know thirty you know four twenty out of five hundred worm coils. Nobody really wants to put that in the deck. I think people are just looking to get those graded and then sell them for big money because it's like a collector's piece, but. Uh, when it comes to like that, like what you're saying that that raised foil, everybody will be cool with it in EDH, but you just can't play it in a tournament, and that's I think, yep, that's just the way it is. And if I just find it yeah. funny that they like, don't get me wrong, the cards look absolutely amazing. Like this is a huge jump from me being in Magic for what about three years now or something like that, mm -hmm. um, or a bit less what they've been trying to do and changing it up. I absolutely love it. Like the fact now yeah. that they do retro border, normal border and borderless to yeah. me, that gives OG players the feel of the old style cards yep. in their decks with the new style rules or whatever. Yep. Then the people have come in midway with that new, like that just normal style and want to keep their decks looking similar. And then, you know, for the people who like the borderless and like the, the more, I don't know, maybe the modern style card, sure. you know. Well, there, there are people that just want to the make, their, is, there's people that just want to make their stuff all like people don't like when things are different. For example, like one might be borderless versus one might be old border. People want all their stuff to match. So if you've got 54 cards that are modern border, you want those other six to match. So there, there is a realm for you to get those, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's pros and cons to it. It means pretty much every card has three different printings or six different printings. Yeah. Because you've got non-foil and foil. Yep. It is flooding the market of all these cards, but there's also a lot more player base now too. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it, also cards still hold their value. Like a Shielder is still 40 bucks. You know, and even with the new printing coming out in the next set, it's still going to retain like... They, every now and then they come out with like an EDH banger, which is like Meat Hook Massacre. That thing, even though it's banned out of standard, that thing's still 40 bucks. And then uh, the Great Henge. Like, there are like EDH plants that are in there that are highly desired, you know? Yep. And those. Just like that um, Red Sun's Twilight that you've mentioned before. That's <laughs> that's a red staple now. Uh, that, I, mean, it, I can't believe you wouldn't. Like, in what world would you not play that? I mean, by force was like. Sometimes you cut it, sometimes you play it, because you might be playing a different version, like Shattery Spree, whatever version of, like, Masked Artifact Removal, or, but, like, that's got to be the one, because just because I have seven mana, I'm going to blow up everything, and I'm going to take all these things, and, you know, Artifacts are just a huge mainstay in the game, so X equals five is a joke, it's so easy to achieve that, you know? Yep. And I think they, it's, it's similar to the, the Devastation, or the Finale Cycle, where it's, like, X is ten or more, which is a hard goal to achieve, in the sense of, like, 12 mana is a lot, right? But seven is yep. like, that's common. And you're going to be able to go, well, I'm going to blow up two soul rings and, you know, this, get all my mana back and then be able to do something else with it. Plus whatever dumb artifacts on the board that can be degenerate. So that, that thing is super sweet with Hanada. That's, it's like cute because I think that card's going to be secretly over time, better and better as they print more X spells that target multiple things. Yep. But <clears throat> with uh, specifically uh, like that spell, if you're playing by force, you can afford the additional red. I don't think there's a big difference between six and seven men and EDH. So you, people are just going to be on that. No problem. Yeah. yeah 100%. Yeah. It's going to give mono red a good little jump forward when they're struggling a little bit. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. No, nah, it's, You'll be able I to can't wait. Yeah. You'll be able to destroy someone's like mana vault 
and then get someone's helm of the host and then be able to do helm stuff on your turn even though it goes away at the end of the turn it's like you'll be able to do all that nonsense because you're going to probably hit two to three mana rocks and then a key artifact and then you're going to be able to do something degenerate yeah, or if someone's running uh, an artifact deck, you'll be able to take their Chromatic Glory, maybe Moss yeah. and Lattice. Oh, yeah. Um, all their bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, it's essentially putting artifact players on blast to be like, you better have your counter spell ready for this and this specifically because it you're going to see it a yep. lot. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, Play Underworld I... Breach. <laughs> you've got infinite. Um, yeah. Uh, mana, like, yeah. People are going to get real pissed real quick. It's just one of those um, things you just, if, you know, it's, it's no different than a cyclonic riff, right? It's like, this guy's got nah. seven, man. Here comes the big play, you know? But, yeah. like, like all things, if you've got the right interaction, you can stop it or play yeah. with it or muck with it. Like, it is what it is, but it, or, or like, it's like, giving like, red Bennett. help without giving them tutors. Yeah, so I, uh, that's kind of where, so... I know you say you play a lot of CDH and as the game progresses, like CDH is removing what I call the fun slots. Like let's say yep. you're playing Bant, you have to play these four, like 35, you have to play your mana rocks plus like these 35 other cards. And then you have like maybe 10 or even less than maybe five to eight flex spots where you can play something that you enjoy, but it still has to be of somewhat power level. Like it has to be relevant where you can't just be like, I want to play this card because it's nonsense. But like, for example, like if you're playing Soul Tide, you could probably have a flex spot for like one villainous wealth, and that's about it. That's like your nonsense. Um, even though that card can be just like a blast to play with. But again, CDH is just as we move forward in Magic, as the game grows, like every CDH deck needs a Jeweled Lotus. Unless, like, there's a few exceptions to that rule, but like that takes a slot. You're going to need a Soul Ring. You're going to need a Mana Crypt. You're going to need, you know, your Mana Vault. Like, that's just taking up slots. And as the game grows, you're going to get. In the CDH room, you're going to get less options, and you're going to be left with like four to two fun spots eventually, and that's that's going to be like, ah, what are we doing here, you know? Yeah, look, you brought up um, Jeweled Lotus. We we typically find if you're running Jeweled Lotus, it's either in mono or dual color decks. Yeah, maybe tri color decks if you're pushing it. Yep. Like I, um, I like it in uh, what's the uh, core vault because it allows for early core vaults and so forth, you know. Yeah. Like core vault, Chul- um, all the tricolored guys that are five plus mana are now like viable. Like I love Tulane, I love core vault, and Jewel Lotus definitely pushed them up like a tier, not a full tier, but it definitely made them like oh you can turn three of core vault or you can turn two or turn three a uh, Tulane. Yep. Um, that new uh, blue red commander that's coming out. Um, the one that gives you the Phyrexian Goblins for it's, the it's non-creature spells. Yeah, the, it's the seven mana flyer, and I believe it's like if it you get non-creature spells, it's like you get X Goblins for the CMC. Yep. Yeah, that one's nuts. So obviously, it's a turn two commander if you got the right cards. Obviously, mm-hmm. so Jessica's Will, Jeweled Lotus, a couple of things on the field. You're dropping it turn two. So my idea of that deck is literally playing that as Spell Slinger with a hint of like a Franco deck in it. Sure, with like uh, uh, Perforos effects or like Impact Tremors. Impact Tremors, yeah. basically. You use the goblins for mana, stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So, but I think I even commented when you you shed the the leak of it onto your um, Facebook page. Seven mana is high. It is high. It's it's a tough, but you can get away with it if you have specifically Jeweled Lotus. You know, it makes it a four mana card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeweled Lotus, Jessica's Will, and like I said, it'll be a turn two. Turn one's not really happening. No, you could try. It's just unlikely. But, yeah, but usually with like blue, like is it decks like, and I don't I don't play too much CDH, but like is it just not? You just always want to play Niv Mizzet, the unconquerable one, right? Like, is there a world where you don't want to play that one? Um, it's either that or the, there's uh, there's the partner one, which is five mana. Lud- Ludwig, the four four flyer, I think. Those are like the two Izzet guys that come to mind. I don't really think of it like it. The that Niv Mizzet is specifically good just because it has the can't be countered f- clause on it, but it is susceptible yeah. to being destroyed by um like Rebs and all those because everybody plays those main because it is blue. 
Yeah, well, that's true. It we don't really have any. Is it um play, uh, decks being played? Like there was one where it was using. Oh, uh, was it displace a kitten? And it was bouncing the commander constantly, so you could keep so um flicking through instants and sorceries. It was a weird combination. Sure. Was, oh, I guess that's the cheater. That's the one I'm thinking of. Jahira, it's just a Cheerios deck. It's every time you cast a, a historic spell, you draw a card, and you just play a bunch of zero drops. Yeah, all right. I'm just I got I got I'm looking at the uh is it uh I'm looking at the CDH deck deck list and so forth and just to see what exists. Yeah. yeah. Eh, it's not too much. It's all storm decks. No. Nah. Nah. Plus uh, so I mean you play the the model black Kirk deck or um it's, it's like the only model black that you, that deck that you can play, right? Yeah, there's not there's not too much going on. Oh man, what's it called? That die out. Huh. Mono white um Teshar is not played anymore. They usually so there's a group that's also here in Milwaukee that does a CEDH uh, podcast. That's very uh, CEDH. It's called um, God, I can't think of the name of it now. Sad Nas, and they 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 go super in depth into CEDH. So if you're into that, like these guys on a weekly basis, they'll go to they talk about traveling to tournaments and competing and all that stuff, and they're super into CEDH. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're lacking that here in Australia. All right. It'll come. It, 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 it'll evolve to that because that CDH is like it was like mentioned a little bit four years ago, five years ago, and then the pandemic happened. And it's, I swear, it's just like CDH is like all. It might just be this town, but you know, we got a Saturday event that happens every week. We have multiple stores that are running, and it is just like straight CDH. We got like a Monday night tournament nearby that's at a different store that is like you know cutthroat. Like it's, and people are into it. You know, I just. I struggle building decks because I get I get really bored quickly. Um, so with my pod that I play with, talking about you know competitive and not competitive and stuff like that, mm-hmm. we we're talking about the whole thing about two rule sets. Yeah, and one way of believing, uh, one idea of ban lists, if we were going to do, if we did get a competitive, um rule set there'd only be a handful like the ban list as it is right now would dramatically reduce yeah i mean you, would, you guys, would you guys allow like sway of stars all that not because that stuff's not good it's unfun but like it's not like a game winning does that make sense yeah exactly and biorhythm would come off yeah um like you'd have the power nine that would stay on there. Obviously, we'd use the the standard, you know, whatever Cat. wizards banned has banned. Chaos or um, would you guys allow channel? Yeah, or is that too good? No, no, we'd allow that. Yeah, that, that like, one seems we're like we're talking about competitive. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're, yeah, yeah. Um, like uh, what was it? Paint and servant and stuff like that, or whatever was banned. Well, well paint like, server is legal bring, now, but yeah. Oh, whatever the other piece was for it, I, I think the I other piece is banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You allow that? Like, I'm all for it. We've got a friend. We've got. I've got two friends that play Brayer. As soon as you give one of the pieces that are banned right now, Brayer goes to competitive. Yeah, like, she is literally held back at the moment. I think there's like so of the cards I see on here, the ones that are like the biggest. You could argue upheaval, but that's also one of those like it's a six. It's similar to like the game ending effect but i do understand that the upheaval player can be degenerate with it and that's fine um braids is just super unfun because the guy that goes turn one jewel lotus braids he's like okay this is stupid um channel- black braid yeah yeah that's the one i was that's talking about. interesting yeah. yeah so black braids i see the reasoning to keep that on the ban list from a competitive point of view yeah but at the same time if you're playing at a competitive table, you should already have the answer for that mm-hmm. when it goes to drop. Yeah, like Coalition Victory can come off. Maybe Emrakul. I don't know. That one, I, that one I got to think about. It's... From a competitive point of view, yeah. like most of these games should be done by turn five. Yeah, that's fair. 
I mean, we're not taking Flash off. We understand the problem with that. You could probably argue that you're yeah. not taking off Gifts Ungiven. I, that one that one is just one of those, like, uh, this is just the auto-include in every blue deck to tutor up your graveyard thing, and you win. But again, the, the argument is you can interact with it. Um, yeah. Hull Breacher could probably come off because there's already three different effects that are similar to it. Uh, Krakus, oh, Hull Breacher and Goal Loss would 100% be off. How do you feel about Leovold? Is that one too good? Um, that's a close one. It's it's. I mean, it's got an insane wheel effect, right? Like, each player can't draw the more than one card during each of their turn or each turn, and then also, um, if you want to remove it, it's going to cost or remove anything of yours is gonna you're gonna draw a card. So, maybe that one stays on just because it is easy to get down quickly. Hmm. Well, the thing is, you'd need to see how the format changes with them being in play. Yeah. And see where the map, because obviously if you unban this upon a star, because I brought up the idea, do you just leave the ban list as it is? Yeah. Or do you strip it right, they brought back, you strip it right back to the bare minimum, mm -hmm. see how the format goes, see where the competitive players are basically bitching about, no, that's, you go to a tournament, say there's 100 people, 99 or 90% yeah. of them are all running the exact same deck. Yeah. Like, Obviously, there's a problem. Something needs to be banned. Yeah. So, you know, that's where you pull it back to bare minimum, see where the issues are with certain cards. Right. To you ban out the cards that will then, you know, put commander, competitive commander where it needs to sit. Yeah. Like, I don't think we allow Tinker because Tinker's degenerate and that one's too easy. Um, probably not. Maybe Rafalos. Rafalos is a weird one, just because I play it all the time in cube, and it, again, it dies removal, and I hate that argument, but unchecked, it can go degenerate, but it's one of those weird ones. A lot of these cards are honestly on here because they're what they call, like, unfun, meaning that, like, when Exactly. People, but that's, then, with that argument, and I always say this, Cyclonic, like, they miss some of those cards. Like, they there's, there's a choice to ignore, like, Cyclonic Rift. That is like the biggest grown test that happens to like so many people. People see that and they just they, they get upset. It's not the end all, but like it's like oh, just let me know when your turn's gonna end. It's like here, here comes the cyclonic rift. Does anybody have a counter spell? No. It's like okay, well, pick up your stuff, you know. And that's not the end of the world, but it's just a cyclonic rift. There are so much of the community that is casual, which is something that the cater to does not like that card, but yet it's untouched and it's just like one of those weird things where they're like, well, just deal with it. But then like that argument can be used against anything on that list. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's, it's, I guess my biggest issue with the rules is it's not a clear why we did this. It's usually just, um, it's random on how they decide things. Like Iona makes no sense to me, but people will swear up and down that Iona needs to be on there. I go, I just disagree with that. I just don't believe that. And if you get the two card combo, it's no different than, you know, Kiki Jiki plus thing that makes it go infinite, you know? Exactly. Um, it's the same as Goal Loss. It's the same as Hull Breacher. Correct. Like... Hull, Hull Breacher, the... there's weird things with it. Because, I mean, I've, I've been, I, when I played it in CDH, I would do Hull Breacher, and a guy would just spite wheel. I'm like, all right, I'm all for it. And then I would get all the treasures. But um, that's probably yep. some unfun things. But that's just that's the community you cultivate, whatever. The wall. You just play the whole um, whole breacher with Teferi's puzzle box. Yeah, I love and that. Just bank all the treasures. Yeah, yep. That's I love Teferi's. It was annoying. Yep. <laughs> but it's just it was annoying. But you you lived with it. You I, moved on. I don't think like like like, like Primeval Titan doesn't need to be on there. Um, Recurring Nightmare does need to be on there. That card's messed up. But that's one of those like like easy. I can go infinite with no problem, and just for such a little thing, probably Yawgmoth's bargain. Just pay one. It's just better Necropotence. Okay. There are some cards that still need to stay, but like, I, I think you're right. I think CDH needs to get defined borders where it's just like, this is the realm of CDH. Here's what we want on band. And then do whatever you want with this band list because it's in the guise of fun. And I know it's not universal because it doesn't make it simple, but there's a, a CDH community growing. And yep. like, there are cards on here that like, no one cares about Biorhythm. Let it be legal. No one cares. And the guy that wants to do a CDH biorhythm deck, more power to you. Good luck. But it's unlikely that that's going to be successful because it's a huge spell that is just not going to resolve. And the only th 
the only way that um, that it would go off is with channel. Right, right. And what you're going to do, you're going to lose yourself as well. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Or people are going to counter the channel or they're going to counter the biorhythm straight off the bat. So sh- you've lost your life. You've tried to cast what a, a, a nine drop or a 10 drop, whatever biorhythm is, and you've just hurt yourself. Like it's, it's, that's why I was saying before that um, you'd have to unban all these cards, then see how decks are running. Mm hmm. And it's 100 cards. It's not like standard. It's not like legacy no. or anything. It's 100 cards. You know, yeah. you could bring in rules that you don't get any mulligans. The first seven cards that you pull off, that's yeah. what you play with. You got no lands, tough tits, you you lose. <laughs> I like that. Like, or, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I'm it, with you. It just, just it, it, it can be its own set up like it's its own thing and i mean that that could take off meaning that like there are there's probably a community like you guys like you said you guys rule zero you have a buddy that plays golos right you guys just let him play golos because it's whatever it doesn't affect you guys because you guys are already at that high level of play so nobody cares yeah 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 it's yeah actually you just reminded me so this lgs we went to last night the um they allowed discussions about rule zero for their comp. So they run a little quick first round tournament. Mm -hmm. If you win the table, you win. That's it. You get a packet for turning up and a packet for winning. Yeah. They were allowing rule zero. (laughs) So the pot of four got to choose what they were allowing to be playable. I mean, that seems like a great, that seems like a great thing because you're just like anybody here care if i do this yeah yeah but my problem with that is just from like from a competitive side of things um and if you're like oh i don't want tutors and it's like well you've kind of signed up to play competitively for a round yes i mean does that also what kind of tutors do you mean i also can't play fetch lands i gotta rearrange 30 cards in my deck that seems difficult. Exactly. Yeah, that's... And yeah. if you're playing a tournament or playing some sort of competition, Rule Zero isn't designed for comp. No, it's not. Well, especially... Yeah, then, yeah you're right. They, they should take that off. It should just be... If you guys want to play with your own, I don't like tutors, you go over here. But if we're going to be entering into a tournament and I don't know who my opponents are, we need some kind of agreement on the rules that's not just like, I don't want to play with tutors. Cause it, that's ridiculous. That's just not what it is. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> driving at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just found it very peculiar the way they were doing that kind of thing. But. Yeah. As for a competitive and. Um. Casual side of things, the ban list for. Um. The ban list for casual, could you imagine how quick that would grow? It would be immediate, right? Like, like we're talking like, we're talking like Cyclonic Rift will be thrown on there, and then... The, the, yeah. Dockside would be on, yeah, just, Drenith Masquerade would be on, you stack pieces would go. Fast as Oracle. The list would just grow like, you know, and it would just be like, well, we've banned this thing, and then this becomes the next best thing because that's gone, and now everybody hates the next best thing because they can't play their Merfolk Tribal deck, so we got to ban that thing. And then the next best thing comes in, and they still can't play their Merfolk Tribal deck, so they got to continue ban. It, it would just get out of hand quickly. Yeah. So it's sorry. It. I I kind of feel sorry for the commanding committee because they've got to play it right now. They've got an issue where they've got to play it very. Um, um, well, they're, they're trying they're to, to play try- it very delicately yeah. because they can't ban stuff that competitive players or even high-level power players are wanting to play at. Yeah. But then they've got to try and keep casual players happy. Yeah. So... 
Yeah, it's it's um, one of the, it's one of those things where it's like that's why the power level system has been enforced, right? Like the power levels exist because players that were like, I refuse to either do anything that's not a homebrew, but I'm sick of playing against like this guy that's got you know fast mana in his deck. I got to get rid of this. So that that's just something that's going to be existing with the format forever. Like it's just that's something we'll have to live with. And that like the power level discussion is annoying, and I know that you brought that up before. It's it's like because it's subjective, but it's kind of they're like, here's your rule zero, just use rule zero, and you'll not have a problem. But again, in your situation where you went to a competitive setting and then there was a rule zero discussion, it's like okay, well that store just needs to have maybe a clearer picture of what rule zero is intended for versus what comp or were an event that they're running is, you know? Yeah, but. I don't mind rule zero when it comes to just casual play or you just mucking around, but I feel like when definitely there's prizes on on the table to win, you, there's no the rules are what they are. There's no modifying them to make it so you've got more of a chance of winning and someone else is penalised for it. Yeah, it's it's you know. that's just people like that's I mean us as a, you like that's the magic community right like. You go to F&M yeah. and the guy's complaining because you brought Ragavans and the, he hates Ragavans because every time he plays against Ragavan, he refuses to put Fatal Push in his deck. It's like, dude, I don't know what to tell you, but you're going to have to live in a world where this card is going to ruin your day until you adjust, you know? Yeah. And, um, like, I've got a friend who who um, hates Mill. <laughs> He's fine if you're going to mill him completely out. Yeah, but if you're gonna sit there and mill three or four cards, three or four cards every turn, it gets really annoying. Yeah, like the and, grab and so forth. <laughs> yeah, or just mind crank just randomly in a deck because you can. Yeah. So when they take that little bit of combat damage each turn, they um, lose those kind of few little cards. Yeah. Um, he has been butt hurt from games previously where. Um, he downgraded Brea to only have a couple of wing cons in it, and um, he got done for 18 damage. I had mine crank out. <laughs> he lost all three wing cons in 18 cards. Milled into the graveyard. Yeah, that's just fair. And that's, he's just like, don't get me wrong. Like sometimes, like when people like in draft that you run into the guy that's like, I'm going to put this random, you know, Tome Scour, which is, you know, target player Mills 5, and you're like, oh, you just hit both my bombs? I'm like, wow, that sucks, you know, or you hit my plane. That's just variance. But, yes, I understand. I yeah. would much rather get one-shotted than a slow death, and especially because you see yep. it dwindling. Yeah. All right, man. All right, Matt. Um, the only other thing I was going to quickly say is I don't know what it's like with over where you are, but – um. Land destruction, yes, there's decks that can do it mm -hmm. and decks that are purely built around doing it, but it seems to be like that unwritten, just it's there, but don't do it. Yeah, that, that's a common thing. Most most EDH decks go, if you're going to play Armageddon, you should be winning the next turn, and if you're just Armageddon to make this game go longer, we're not going to play with you anymore. And that, that You're right, that is an unwritten rule, and I've heard it verbally said too, where it's like, do you have Armageddon? Because if you are, I don't want to play with you. So, yeah, I mean, that's it's I think that's just a, it's a universal thing. People just want to be able to play their spells. And when you play a card that just if I ramped five times in the game, I have 13 lands and I have to go back to zero. It's just really brutal in a casual sense. Yeah, 100 percent. All right, man. It, yeah, I just I was kind of curious to see if you still got the same kind of thing with land destruction. That's always been a thing here. And I mean, even like competitive, like people hate wasteland because they'll go like, well, you wasteland lock me. It's like, that's the game. That's what it is. Like, sorry. <laughs> or, or whatever it may be. But I mean, I, I, uh, <laughs> I've said this multiple times. There's a deck that a buddy of mine plays. It's a Orzhov deck. And the only win condition is his commander of Obzadad coming in and draining people for two. And the rest of the deck is recurring his, his Armageddon's and stack pieces, but the stack pieces aren't like taxing in a way where it's like annoying. It's just like making sure that nobody can play a spell. And he just tries to kill everybody with Obsidat in a very slow fashion. And his goal is to make sure that everybody just stays at the table with them as long as possible. He'll go to that like CDH tournament that I'm talking about and just make it so yep. like, just make it living hell for everybody. <laughs> Look, 
there's fun for that, just if it's not every single week you're facing that kind of... He does it once in a while, but every time he does it, it's it's, yeah. it's to a brand new group of people, and they don't know what they're getting into, <laughs> and then they're just stuck, and they just go... They get a little bit of glimmer of hope, and he's like, oh, the, the ravages of war, like, and they're just like, oh my god, there's another version of the card? I was like, sure is. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same as my mate with Frick. <laughs> we'll get a new group of people sit down. They'll have modified precons, yeah. and it's like, oh, I'll play something that's got a bit of power to it. And it's like, oh, turn one, I win. Yeah. And they're just looking at him and like, wait, what the fuck? And then he goes, all right, I'll pull something else out now, and then we can actually have a game. <laughs> he just, you know, someone always has to flop that big dick on the table. You know, like yeah, it's just I, I, I'm the boss of this gym, baby. That's what I do. <laughs> yep, that's All right. it. All right, bro. So, Matt, thanks for coming on the cast again, and and you're always welcome, buddy. Hey, when I remember that you're doing one, I will definitely jump on. All right, man. See ya. All right, see ya.